Welcome to Skydome, where the roof is open, but the jury is still out on the two teams we'll see tonight. K. Stevenson, Sacramento Gold Miners are 1-4, and four, but their quarterback, David Archer, is having a great year, leading all quarterbacks in passing. On the other side of the field, Dennis Myers Argos are 0-5. He knows the heat is on, and his players know they must get to David Archer to be successful. Tonight, the league's oldest team meets the newest on the CFL Live. For Sacramento coach Kay Stevenson, 1993 has been a learning experience. And his quarterback, David Archer, has been to the school of hard knocks. But the star pupil has been running back Mike Oliphant, an NFL veteran who has shown that he's got the speed and the moves to be a star in the CFL. I haven't played a year in the CFL yet, but uh, I hope that uh, uh, my speed and agility uh, you know, will help me, uh, help me do good up here. For the Toronto Argonauts, 1993 has been a season of disappointment. A season clouded by a quarterbacking controversy. But there's been more to it than that. Poor play on special teams and turnover after turnover have left the Argos at 0-5 and, and desperately groping for answers. We've got to take it upon ourselves individually to go out and do our jobs. You know, and that's make the throw when I get the throw. Uh, run if I have to, and uh, you know the other guys got to do their jobs as well. Tonight, Mike Kerrigan and the Argos hook up with Mike Oliphant and Sacramento on the CFL Live. The CFL Live on TSN is brought to you by Pepsi. Be young, have fun, drink Pepsi. And by Mark's Work Warehouse, clothes that work. It's 21 degrees Celsius, the wind is gusting, but the Argos say the roof will remain open, this despite the possibility of rain later on. The Sacramento Gold Miners make their first trip to Toronto to take on the Argos. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the CFL Live on TSN. I'm Gord Miller. Sacramento and Toronto may be a long way apart geographically, but they have a lot in common. They both are in last place in their divisions, and both can look to the offensive line as the reason. Both teams have been devastated by injuries, and when you tell Sacramento that they'll have an easy time replacing injured players, don't believe it. They've had as difficult a time as anyone else in the CFL. Two teams trying to get on track tonight to talk more about this game. Let's go upstairs to John Wells. All right, Gord, a lot at stake for the Argos in particular after five straight losses. This is a desperate football team badly in need of a victory. If it doesn't come tonight, changes will most certainly follow. In fact, there was one major change last week. So for the second time in two weeks, Mike Kerrigan is the starting quarterback for the Argos. Yeah, John, Mike Kerrigan gets to start tonight. And, you know, he came to Toronto last year as the backup quarterback to Ricky Foggy. Only threw 59 passes. This year, much the same. Going to training camp to back up Tracy Ham. Well, Ham has struggled. He has not understood this offense and hasn't been able to execute it. So enter Mike Kerrigan. Tonight, a tremendous opportunity for Mike Kerrigan to shed that perception that he is only a backup or a number two quarterback tonight. If somehow he can dig deep, recapture the talents that he had in his glory years in Hamilton. You know, I honestly believe he has to be a chance to be the starter for quite some time here. Sacramento starter David Archer is number two among all CFL passers, and tonight he looks for his first ever victory north of the 49th. From Skydome, this is CFL Live. And these are two teams running out of excuses. What will be the difference in Toronto this night? John, I really think it's going to be, can the Toronto front four put pressure on David Archer? David Archer, when he has had time to throw, even though they have lost four games, has been extremely effective. Toronto, on the other hand, has not been able to get to any quarterbacks this year. Only seven sacks. So tonight, I think the key could be, if they let David Archer get on a roll, they could be in trouble. So can the front four of the Toronto Argonauts get to this man right here, David Archer? If they can, good night. If they can't, I can see Archer having a 400-yard-plus night passing. Yeah, the Eskimos got to him last week, so we'll see if the Argos can tonight. Tonight's starting lineups brought to you by Speedy Autoglass. Don't take a chance. Take your Autoglass repairs and replacement 
to Speedy Autoglass. Ready to get this one underway, and it's a short kick. Third week in a row for the third game that we've done, Leaf, that the opening kickoff has been taken back and redone. Jim Crouch in charge of field goals and kickoffs for the gold miners. Bud Steen is in charge of proceedings here tonight. The kicking team number three, penalty is declined. First down. The Argos decide they'll take the ball where it landed. Yeah, why not? 41-yard line, not a bad place to start the game. And for Mike Kerrigan, hey, this is his opportunity to take control of this football team and shed that image that I think he's been tapped with as a number two guy. First and ten, Argos Kerrigan to the far side, has his man. That's Clark. Mike Kerrigan has been the most effective Argo quarterback. He gets his second straight start in this one tonight. Derek McAdoo will try and establish the Argo running game in his second appearance. Masadi and Clark are the wide receivers with Willis and Kip Lewis inside. And the offensive line is as good as it has been in their previous five games. Steve Rota Huskers and a trade with the BC Lions starts at left tackle, and they are a much better group up front tonight. A gain of nine, this is second and one Argos, and penalty markers go down as Derek McAdoo gets the handoff. This is his second start as a Toronto Argonaut. Number 19, Derek McAdoo played last week for the Argos against Calgary and then took the Saskatchewan game off to get married, which had been a long-term plan, and his wife-to-be uh, didn't quite understand that maybe the football game in Saskatchewan might be important. The wedding was much more so. Absolutely. Those numbers you saw, seven carries, 47 yards, were all in that first half of that Calgary game. The second down and six to go, the Argos. Masadi, the intended receiver, and the coverage upfield provided by Tommy Henry, number 19. Speedy cornerback from Florida State. Sacramento defense is playing a lot differently than it did when we first saw them in the opener against Ottawa. They are coming up and challenging the receivers a lot more than they did early in the season where they like to stay back in the zone. There you see Tommy Henry in the bump and run. Great position on Mazzotti to knock that intended pass away. But Sacramento slowly adapting much better to the Canadian game. Here's Hank Elisic on third down. Gets near the 35 to get a bouncing kick away. This is Freeman Basinger, number one. With a chance to make a play on it, and he couldn't quite as it rolls out near the 30-yard line. David Archer, the CFL's second-ranked passer, trying to rebound from last week's loss to the Edmonton Eskimos. In the backfield, Mike Oliphant, a solid running back, along with Mike Bringle, Dixon and Harris, a couple of speedy wide receivers, and World League veterans Basinger and Parker are inside. And an offensive line that has struggled so far in their new season, giving up 25 sacks already in five games. Newcomer tonight, Claude Jones, gets to start at right tackle, and uh, they're going to have their hands full trying to protect their valuable commodity, David Archer. Rod Harris to the near side. Titus Dixon flanks to the far side, top of your screen. On first down, Sacramento. The fake to Oliphant, and Archer goes long for Dixon. Titus Dixon making his fourth straight start. Can't come up with that one. Archer slightly off the mark. Coverage by Reggie Pleasant. Interesting way to start the game, a little play action, and Titus Dixon in his fourth game tries to just blow by Reggie Pleasant, but Reggie Pleasant was having an excellent 1993 step for step with him. Ball overthrown. Yep, the inside on the intended receiver, so this will be second and ten. Archer from the shotgun comes to the near side this time and has Dixon. That'll be good for a first down for the gold miner. Working on Chorus Urban, number 24. Dixon has the first down. And talk about throwing on timing. Watch Titus Dixon. Now he's going to break to the out. Urban with the inside position and Boom, turns his head, snaps it back, and the ball is right on target. David Archer saying, okay, you go down 14, and that thing is going to be in the air. Nice catch, and they pick up their initial first down. Sacramento from the 45, first and 10, no score. It's early in the opening quarter at Skydo. Archer looks to the near side, then back over the middle. 
Mike Oliphant was the intended receiver, but there was pressure from Harold Holloman. The Argos need a better pass rush up front. They got a little bit there from veterans Campbell, Harding, and Holloman. And they need Williams, Benson, and Warren to provide a little more spark in the linebacking core. Of course, Irvin, the newcomer in the secondary. This is the third game now coming over from the Hamilton Tiger Cats. But this has been a secondary that has been victimized by not enough pressure up front. And, well, they've had to stay with their men for a long time. Archer stands in on second and ten, has his man Basinger, and Basinger has the first down. Twelve yards, and Archer has the Gold Miners on a bit of a roll here. And since we last saw the Gold Miners, they have made an adjustment. Freeman Basinger was a wide receiver. He has moved the slot back in with tremendous speed. He's able to slide underneath the coverage across the field, and Archer with good protection picks him out, and back-to-back -back first downs for the Gold Miners. And well, that's what I talked about in the opening, John. David Archer, if you let him get on a roll, I mean, what, from what I have seen of him, he is a quality quarterback, and uh, he can do some damage. First and ten. Gold Miners at the 53. Looked like a mix-up there. And David Archer surrenders as he was surrounded by Argos, including uh, Mike Gamble, Mike Oliphant, uh, I believe, was supposed to get the ball. But uh, somehow, between quarterback and runner, a little miscue. This is the best play that they run in their running game, and it's a sprint draw to Mike Oliphant. For some reason, Oliphant left a little early. It didn't look like Archer's timing was off, so the blame goes to Oliphant there. That's the best running play that they execute. A loss of three. This is second and 13. Goal miners shy of midfield at the 54. From the shotgun, Archer stands in with time to fire this time. This is Dixon, the intended receiver, and almost picked off. Coverage again supplied by Corus Urban. That'll be an interesting matchup to watch. Well, apparently the game plan for the gold miners is to go deep and go deep early, as this is the second time they've tried the long bomb to Dixon, and actually he is in behind Corus Urban, but good reaction by Urban and good positioning. Positioning more than anything else gave him an opportunity for that interception. On third down. Paul McJulian. The pinball, Mike Clemens. And his 22, looking for some room to the far side. Finds a little seam and crosses the 30. He's near the 35, where he's stopped by Sacramento. Tacklers led that time by Mike Bringle, number 27. So pinball gives the Argos decent field position with a 14-yard return. Otto Aragon has been the most effective Argonaut quarterback. He is not a running quarterback by his own admission, as you talked to him yesterday. Well, you know, yeah, we had a great chat, and uh, I'm a big fan of Mike Kerrigan's. You know, I said, no, Mike, now listen, it's fair to say that, hey, plan A is good for you, and that is reading defenses, as you just said in that clip. But plan B, when it's time to pressure the line of scrimmage with the run, uh, it's just not there. And he said, no, you're right. He said, I, he can, admits it. I can still buy myself a little extra time and run around and maybe throw a pass, but if you're expecting me to pressure the line of scrimmage by running the football, uh-uh. It's, it's not there. Well, we'll see what Kerrigan can do in his second chance with the football. Argos begin at the 35. No score so far. It's early at Skydo. Sacramento in town against Toronto. Kerrigan looking to the near side. Masadi, the intended receiver, and almost had the ball. I thought he had it for a split second as he jumped high over number five, Marshall Roberts. And they go right after Marshall Roberts. Tommy Henry was injured on that last punt return. He is out. Marshall Roberts comes into the game cold. So, hey, why not take a shot at the guy? And Paul Mazzotti almost makes a spectacular catch. Watch the timing up and over the top. But Marshall Roberts had the helmet in the chest and just would not allow Mazzotti to make the catch. Mazzotti to the near side. Robert Clark flanks to the far side of the field on second and ten for the Argos. Kerrigan has a man open over the middle. It'll be a first down as Larry Willis has his first catch. Good for 14 yards in front of the safety, John Wiley. 
Sacramento defense has managed just six sacks. White and White, Hammond and Ledbetter will try and supply a little more pass rush up front. The leader at linebacker is number 94, Curtis Moore, who's right in the middle. Interesting, Sacramento carries eight defensive backs, and Tommy Henry is out. Marshall Roberts, number five, as you see right there in the bottom of your screen, is in. On first down, Mazzotti, short of the first down, but he's more than halfway there. Roberts made the tackle. Gain is eight yards. Paul Mazzotti has made some tremendous catches for the Argonauts. Had a great game in Calgary two games ago, and tonight so far he is the favorite target of Mike Kerrigan, and they hook up there on a good call on first down. If Sacramento's going to hang in that zone coverage, run Mazzotti on the hitch, and he gets almost nine yards. Second and better than one, and the Argos come up short. Derek McAdoo. Watch what the blitz does to the running scheme. Here's Curtis Moore, the middle linebacker, coming right through, and McAdoo, as he tries to bang it up into the hole, just has no room to run. There's 94 Moore, hits it right on the button. And the Argos are going to go gambling. It's a long yard to go for Mike Kerrigan here. Halfway through the opening quarter, there's early movement, and markers are down. Like linebacker Ewan Matthews moved a little early, number 37. That's the indication from referee Bud Steen. And the veteran Kerrigan made it work. Offside, number 71 on the defense, first down. Uh, here's Keelan Matthews right up there, and he's the one that really, they're going to call 71 Brent White, but I think it's uh, Matthews that really encroaches there. You see that right foot over the line. So the Argonauts take the penalty and keep the drive going. Yes, first and 10 at the 47. Kerrigan looks to the far side for Clark. He has it and lost the ball. Going out of bounds, but the Argos retain possession. A 16-yard gain for Robert Clark. The Argo march continues. Kerrigan has been very effective so far. Bobby Humphrey is the most experienced professional football player on this team. Number 39. You may remember him from his days with the New York Jets. First and 10, Argos at the Sacramento 32. Masadi, touchdown! Garrigan to Paul Masati, his second touchdown catch of the season. Kerrigan does a nice job to get this ball away. He knows the blitz is coming. Mazzotti works inside Marshall Roberts. That is a tremendous pattern. And you saw how nicely Mike Kerrigan feathered that long bomb to Mazzotti. And with the good hands that he has really developed throughout his career, made the nice catch and put away for the Argos to get going here in the first quarter. They come up with the first touchdown of the game. Lance Chomick with Kerrigan to hold. And it's 7-0 Toronto. The Argos have had some difficulty getting the early lead so far this season. They have it for now. Kerrigan to Masadi. A nice touchdown play. From Skydo, CFL Live. Jo Mazzotti was the Argos' leading receiver in 1992. He's out there again this year. Second touchdown is right here. Yeah, and the result was a much better offensive line tonight for Toronto. And I'm going to show you how they pick up the blitz and score this touchdown. Here's Keelan Matthews. He's going to come through here. They block up right here, but Blaine Schmidt, the center, he slides over there. Let it go. They pick up the blitz and give Mike Kerrigan time to pick out Mazzotti. There it is. Hey, what a great block. The throw is away. Mazzotti with the good pattern. And, you know, it takes 12 guys working together to score a touchdown. And you saw a great example of that. They don't pick up the blitz. Kerrigan doesn't have time to throw. Mazzotti did a pretty good job on Marshall Roberts, number five, bringing him in. And then going to the outside one more time. The Argo kickoff. Down to Mike Pringle at the 11. 
Pringle looks for a little to the outside. There's not much there. And he stopped at the 35. Entered David Archer one more time to counter Mike Kerrigan's impressive scoring drive. Seven plays, 75 yards. Good possession time, 334. Capped off by the 31-yard pass to Paul Mazzotti. Well, of course, when you're a team that's struggling, uh, you really need to build some confidence early in a game. And I think that drive by Mike Kerrigan and his offense will go a long way to restoring some sort of confidence within them. Titus Dixon, number eight, comes to the near side. It is first and ten for the Gold Miners, beginning at the 35. Mike Oliphant, he's a speedster, and he has a first down. Good cut as he turned it upfield for a gain of better than ten. He is the leading rusher on this team and the leading rusher through four weeks in Canadian football. Yeah, and you know, I think the most impressive thing about Mike Oliphant is the fact that he's averaging 6.6 no yards per carry. And, of course, in three-down football, if you've got a guy over five, you have a chance to have some sort of consistent running game. This time, Dixon goes to the far side of the field. And Archer comes back this way for Carl Parker. Parker forced out by two Argos, but not before he came very close to the first down. Chorus Irvin was there along with Darren Hughes. Good read by David Archer. If Toronto's going to sit back, just work it out into the flat to your slot back and let him pick up a few extra yards. They call it an even 10 for Carl Parker, and that gives the Gold Miners a first down. Across the Argo side of midfield at the Toronto 52. Mike Oliphant breaks one tackle and moves to the outside. Away from one more, he could score, stopped. Touchdown! Slowed down at the one. A 53-yard touchdown run by Michael Oliphant. Looked to be stopped by Benson. Who had a beat on him. He wasn't going to stop him far short of the goal line, but what a run by Mike Oliphant. Yeah, tremendous blocking at the point of attack between Ron Shipley and Mike Kaselek, the center, and then it's all Mike Oliphant on his own, and, you know, we just talked about him averaging 6.6. .6. He has been very productive and very productive on that run. He gets the minors on the scoreboard. A 53-yard touchdown run. Jim Crouch evens the ball game at 7-7. Sacramento's hero for right now, Mike Oliphant. A brilliant 53-yard touchdown. Rising Sun is a captivating thriller. Provocative and stimulating entertainment. Sean Connery is cooler than ice and sexier than ever. I'm a black belt, but of course you are, dear. <laughs> Oscar potential for Wesley Snipes. We have a murder here. I want to solve it. Connery and Snipes simply sizzle in the can't-miss thriller of the summer. They won't get away with this. Rising Sun. Now playing at theaters everywhere. Number 33, Mike Oliphant, has four touchdowns this season. This was his third along the ground. And this is their best running play, that sprint draw, and his offensive line does a terrific job. Mike Campbell's coming on a stunt. He takes himself out of it. Here comes Harold Hallman. Watch the job that Ron Shipley, the right guard, does. He'll wheel him out, Kaselik, and they create that lane right through there. Arnie Williams, the middle linebacker, he's going to miss the tackle, but boy, did they pick up that stunt perfectly. Look at that lane, and now you get Oliphant to the secondary. That's all a running back can ask for, and boy, he sure makes the most of it. Here's a quick scoring drive, a minute 49 to cover 75 yards, but when you run at 53 yards like Mike Oliphant did, you can get back to even rather quickly. Boy, he's a terrific-looking running back, and... You know, we'd heard about his credentials uh, as Sacramento was putting their team together to compete in the CFL this year. He had some successful years with the Cleveland Browns. I remember watching him, and, well, I thought uh, he was going to be a perfect back for this league, and he cer certainly hasn't disappointed. Drafted by the Washington Redskins. Later, he was a late cut by the Seahawks. Right now, he has the gold miners back to even with the Argos. 
And we've got a good start to this football evening at Skydome. Bouncing for the pinball, Mike Clemens. Zatilny backing up with the play, comes up with it, and he's to the 26 and no farther. Wally Zatilny stopped there. Leading the tacklers for Sacramento, Troy Mills, number 20. And Kerrigan, who engineered a very impressive drive the last time he had his hands on the ball, gets a chance now to respond. Decent numbers, 5 of 7, 79 yards, and the touchdown toss to Masadi. Yeah, very decent numbers, and I think the most impressive thing for Mike Kerrigan is now seven touchdown passes he has thrown in uh, brief playing time, only one interception. Kerrigan looks one way and goes to the other side. Robert Clark, an 18-yard gain. Dennis Meyer has to be a little happier with the way his offense started this football game, but he's even Steven now at 7-7, so he needs a little more help. And I think Dennis Meyer is feeling the pressure 0-5, and uh, I think he feels like if they don't turn it around tonight, you never know what may happen. He thinks his team is getting a little bit better. They are. First and ten. Kerrigan pumps once and has a man open. That's Larry Willis, number 84. Ten yards for Willis. Hey Stevenson won the final Rome Bowl with the Sacramento Surge in 1992. Many remember him as a coach in Buffalo. And in Seattle, he also coached Vince Barragamo in Los Angeles. I like that. You know, I thought it was interesting. They said, uh, what do you think of that run and shoot? And he said, well, heck, you know, I saw it. Mouse Davis coached New Jersey in the World League. I, I was with the championship Sacramento team, so certainly nothing new for me. Another Argo first down. And Hudson got the call, number 26. He's averaging just 2.7 yards a carry. But he has two touchdowns, one receiving, one along the ground. Well, when you're at home tonight watching this game, keep your eye on number 26, Warren Hudson, because the rule of thumb for the run and shoot is where the fullback goes, the play is going to go. So more often than not, if you watch Warren Hudson, he'll take you to the football. Second and six, Mazzotti to the near side. Clark, wide receiver, far side of the field. Mazzotti gets the call. And he's short of the first down. Coverage by Kolar. He had enough in his pattern and was forced back by the tackle, so they'll mark it right on the 45. And we'll measure. And it's interesting how Mike Kerrigan's using Paul Mazzotti tonight. If the corners come up and play him tight, they're trying to automatically go over the top of that defense with the home run. If they lay off, they're running that eight, nine yard hitch pass. So really at this point in time, whatever the Sacramento corners do is wrong. Toronto's trying to take advantage of them. It is officially an Argo first down. Mazzotti's numbers, three for 45, and the touchdown of 31 yards included in that total. Another catch to keep the Argo drive alive. It is first and 10 Argos at the 45. Kerrigan has Larry Willis at the 30. John Wiley comes up from his safety spot to make the stop. Willis has 16 yards. John, you know what the key is in the Toronto success right now is Mike Kerrigan is getting time to throw. Look at this. Perfect pocket form for Kerrigan. Hey, he's got more than a two count, three count. Willis has time to get open. Good hit by Wiley in the middle. That's what he's supposed to do is the free safety. But hey, you give Mike Kerrigan time and he's going to be effective as he is right now. Now at the 29, Argos first and 10. He has time once more and that's Robert Clark stepping out of bounds inside the 20. And this is pure run and shoot offense. And what I mean by that is if the corner stays off, the wide receiver has options. This option, if he lays off, is to run the out. Now, if the corner was up, that means the wide receiver is going to go deep, either with the fly pattern or the post. So for whatever the corner does, the receiver has an option. And that time it was to go to the out. Kerrigan read it perfectly. And Toronto is really in sync here in the first quarter. A nice crisp 12-yard pattern for Clark and a first down for the Argos. Kerrigan was on the money. Willis couldn't hang on, number 84.
Third start for Larry Willis, former Calgary Stampeder who played with the Blue Bombers last year. Six receptions, 125 yards, and one touchdown as an Argo. Second and ten, Argos at the Gold Miners 17. Carrigan to his left, throwing on the run, and he's almost picked off. Lewis was the intended receiver. See, here's where plan B for a Mike Kerrigan would be in order if he was able to do it. That would be to run with the football because there was a lot of open field in front of him, but you know, his forte is throwing, not running. So see, hey, look, that's a lot of open space there. He might have been able to pick up a first down and instead he threw up one that uh, was almost picked off. Second incomplete pass for Kerrigan as he looked for Willis there. His last 10, he is 10 for 14, 167 yards so far. This drive will end deep inside Sacramento territory. Gordon. Gentlemen, there's been a change in the Sacramento defensive backfield after Marshall Roberts, the starting corner, got burned for that Paul Mazzotti touchdown. They took him out of the game and put in a newcomer, Hesh Kolar, number 31. They like his speed and they like the way he can play. So they're saying that Marshall Roberts is rapidly playing himself out of the Sacramento lineup. Part of the rather solid middle of the Sacramento Gold Miners defensive alignments. There's an injured Argo down near the 10 yard line. And that's Larry Willis. The Argo's next home game against the Edmonton Eskimos. Ron Lancaster and company have never had a great deal of success at Sky Dome. We'll see how they do the next time they come in to meet the Argos here, but tickets are available for that one. Isn't it funny how that uh, works. Uh, it seems like forever the Eskimos have had a less than uh, stellar performance when they come to Toronto. I don't know why. Maybe you just get favorite places you like to play and less favorite places that yeah. you would rather go. And Toronto seems to be one of those places for Edmonton. Yeah, I know for a fact that. Uh, yeah. This is not one of uh, Lancaster's favorite places to play. And a few Argo nuts along the sidelines. Watch as Lance Chomick gets set for a field goal try. Kerrigan will spot it at the 24. No doubt about that one as the Argos take a three-point lead on the gold miner. Lance Chomick's ninth field goal of the season. He's been good on nine. 12 now. 10 7 is the score. Argos have had a difficult start to this season. Five straight losses, but uh, they're a long way from the records for futility. The longest winless streak, the Tiger Cats. 19 losses and one tie. Montreal in the old days. 12 losses and four ties. Back in 69, that Tiger Cat mark was uh, 48 to 50. That's two seasons almost in those days. Three games in eight days has been a little tough for Dennis Meyer and the Argos. Stevenson was welcomed to the Canadian Football League with what, two games in four, five days? Ottawa then on to Hamilton the same week. That was opening week for Sacramento. That yeah, was Wednesday night in Ottawa and then Saturday night in Hamilton, and uh, they got a rude awakening and a rude welcome to the CFL. Two losses back to back uh, there. Finally able to eke out a win where I guess the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at home for their only victory of the season so far. And losses at home included Calgary and Edmonton. Is the win over Saskatchewan. Yeah, if there's such a thing as a good loss, it was that loss to Calgary in one of the best games I've seen in some time. Titus Dixon gets it out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. Ken Benson made the tackle for the Argos. So as I look at David Archer and his performance over five games, their win against Saskatchewan, he had three touchdown passes, no interceptions. That seems to be the key for him if he could stay away from the turnovers he has a chance to be successful they, they win that game and then the following week they have Edmonton 
He throws no touchdowns and three interceptions. So if he can keep that ratio down, it seems like that's what makes him much more effective. Yeah, the Eskimos were charging, too. They sacked him seven times, or at least sacked Sacramento quarterback seven times in that one. First down. Good pick to Oliphant. Pringle takes it coming out of the backfield. Slipped and was pinned short of the first down. The few players in Sacramento that have any Canadian Football League experience. Mike Brinkle had a little bit of time with the Edmonton Eskimos a couple of years back. He too has a healthy uh, rushing average at well, 5.5. Mike Oliphant uh, certainly will go up after that long touchdown run, but Brinkle and Oliphant, pretty good combination in that Sacramento backfield. They call it a gain of five. Archer on second and five. Oliphant was the intended receiver. It bounced off his pads. Archer has struggled a bit. On the other hand, Mike Kerrigan has engineered two pretty successful marches. Lazzotti, three for 46 and a touchdown from Kerrigan. And Mike Oliphant has the other touchdown. 65-yard run. Yeah, I think a footnote to that storyline would be the play of Mike Kerrigan here in the first quarter. Julian. McJulian in his second game, and this is the pinball Mike Clemens completely surrounded by gold miners. Special teams has been a problem for the Toronto Argonauts, not only tackling, but getting any kind of return yardage out of punts and kickoffs. You know, the last few seasons, the Toronto Argonauts have been notorious for their kick return game. Mike Clemens three years ago, and of course, with the Rocket the last couple of years. And this year, uh, kind of surprising that they have no kick returns for touchdowns, and really that has been a, a sorry area for this club, whereas in the past, it was probably one of their strengths. Mike Kerrigan on first down. He's across the 35 at about the 35 and a half. Make it the 36. Kerrigan has had time to throw and does again. Out pattern to Kip Lewis. 24 receptions, almost 300 yards for Kip Lewis. A couple of touchdowns. He's over 300 now in the season after a 25-yard gain there. Mike Kerrigan saw the blitz coming. When the middle safety comes up, you can count on blitz, and Kip Lewis just runs straight to the corner. The ball is nicely thrown. Kerrigan, great touch on the football tonight. That long touchdown pass to Mazzotti, and now feathering it in nicely to Kip Lewis. And uh, well, it seems like Mike Kerrigan has come with his game face on tonight. And Argo first down at the Gold Miner 50-yard line. Kerrigan a quick toss this time behind the intended receiver and it's picked up. Intercepted by Charlie Franks. And number 17 continues to roll. Slowed down near the 20. He lost it there. Loose ball. And who has it? I think it's going back to the Argos. Warren Hudson came up with a bouncing ball on the final play of the opening quarter. First the interception by Charles Franks. Yeah, nice work on the tip there. Franks, uh, good reaction to pick that ball off, but at the end of this run, he will cough it up, and after a mad scramble, Warren Hudson gets it, and the Argonauts get the ball back. The Argos will have the ball, but they lose an awful lot of ground. However, they'll be happy with this turnover for now. This sports update is brought to you by Speedy Auto Glass. Don't take a chance. Take your auto glass repairs and replacement to Speedy Auto Glass. And welcome to our Control Center. I'm Michael Landsberg. We'll see you on Sports Desk at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. Full roundup of the day in sport right now. Let's take a peek at the Yankees against the Blue Jays. Game four of this four-game series. Jimmy Key on the mound. It's the sixth inning. Bases loaded with the Jays trailing it by two. Tony Fernandez with a big blow. It's a three-run double. And the Jays led the Yankees by a count of four to three. Make that a three-run triple. But Juan Guzman could not hold the lead. Bottom of the inning, Paul O'Neill lines a drive to right field, and it's never Never in doubt. The baseball game was then tied at four. O'Neill uh, was involved in the go-ahead run as well. Five for the final count. All the scores, all the highlights on Sports Desk at 11 Eastern. Some cracked windshields have to be replaced. Others can be repaired. 
At Speedy Auto Glass, they do both. And either way, it's guaranteed. Don't take a chance. Take it to Speedy. Speedy Auto Glass, at Speedy we can. Today's Touchdown to Win winners may receive one of these prizes. A Fujitsu PCX cellular telephone, the world's smallest cellular flip phone with features to satisfy virtually every personal communications need. Small wonder. Or a Stanley Homeowner's Toolkit featuring 13 of Stanley's best-selling products. Top quality for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Stanley helps you do things right. Ballots available at all participating Safeway stores. Ready to begin the second quarter at Skydome. The Argos in possession of the ball after double turnovers, one play. Toronto leading by three. Kerrigan has a man out there. Oh! Kip Lewis. You could have had that one, Kip. You should have had that one, Kip. And Dennis Myers has seen a lot of things, has seen a lot of things go wrong. He had to smile at this one. Yeah, that's the run and shoot to perfection. Watch two guys jump Larry Willis and. Kip Lewis comes free, and oh no! Hey, now how many nights do you think he's going to remember this one? Oh, Dennis! I don't blame you, Dennis. That was six, unless he ran out of gas. Yeah, that was the only thing that was going to stop him. Kerrigan on second and ten. As Clark, and overthrew him that time. So two and a punt for the Argos. Could have been a little bit worse because Sacramento had possession of the ball on this interception returned by Charlie Franks. The Argos come up with a fumble recovery. Watch here, Lee. I was wondering if some of the Sacramento players really knew that if they just knocked it out of bounds, they'd have possession of the football. It was loose. Well, Hudson jumped on it pretty quickly. Yeah, it's an interesting thought, though. Uh, of course, in the NFL and college, you have to have total possession. You can't just bat it out of bounds and retain possession. Uh, Paul Hudson came down and scooped that thing up pretty quickly. Ankle is extending at his five and a booming kick away. Freeman Basinger chased back to his 25. Good special teams coverage by the Argos. And Basinger is stopped in his tracks with a four yard return. 66 yard boomer from Hank Elisic. He just tripped there. Sacramento first down. David Archer begins just shy of his 30 yard line. Shotgun. Archer far side. Man open. That's Carl Parker. He was a World League All Star last year. 14 catches. Numbers from the opening quarter include 196 net yards for the Argos. Turnovers dead even. At the time of possession, favoring the Argos by better than four minutes. Second and and it's Parker. Second and two, and he'll have the first down. Back to back catches by Carl Parker. Interesting series for the Sacramento Gold Miners. Going with six receivers set there, three to each side to try and open things up and give the Argonauts a different look. What the Argonauts did to counteract that was just drop back in his own coverage. So Archer did the right thing and threw the quick passes out to his wide receiver, Carl Parker. Two backs in the backfield, and Prindle got the call on first and ten. as you talk about all the receivers that Sacramento is using a little later in the season when we saw them in Ottawa. It was a team that looked like a very, very much like an NFL-style offense, and I think Stevenson is changing things around a bit. Well, they, you know, I mean, they have a grace period. They're allowed to slowly adapt to this style of game, and it looks like they have here again. Six receivers out. On second and six, pick off. That's Dave Van Bellingham. With room to the far side of the field, but not enough speed to get past the 40. A 31-yard return by Van Bellingham, who sat back 
at his free safety spot and waited for the toss from David Archer that time. Interception problems plaguing Archer in the last couple of games. Yeah, and that's quarterback error trying to hit Titus Dixon. He simply overthrew him, and who's waiting for it but the free safety, Dave Van Bellingham, and he gets the interception. The Argos get the turnover, and as hot as Mike Kerrigan has been here in the first half, don't be surprised if he is able to add to their 10-7 lead. Another turnover. Dave Van Bellingham has his first interception of the night, and the Argos lead it by three. In reality, times have changed, and Levi's jeans have changed right along with them. Oh, there'll always be a place for regular fitting, Levi's. It's called Mark's Work Warehouse. But now there's something new. New Levi's loose fitting jeans, a more realistic way to fit into the world. You don't have to go far to see how that works. Just to Mark's. For Levi's. To throwing that last interception, David Archer can't be too pleased. And coming into this game, he knew he'd get a tough test from the Argos, who are desperately trying to turn things around. Archer had these thoughts as the Gold Miners and Argos prepared to meet tonight. Well, you know, we're going to come out and do some of the things that we feel like we do best, and that's uh, uh, obviously get the quarterback in the gun and do some of the things that we like to do, uh, throwing the football. And they've seen film on us, too, so they know what we like to do. Uh, at this time of the year, there's really no fooling anybody. Uh, everybody's got film on everybody. Uh, when you play three or four games, the game plans are taken off about three games back, so they all have a pretty good feel for what you like to do and the crunch situations and things. So we're not going to fool them. We just have to execute. I think our biggest problem has been we've turned the ball over and we've had penalties. We've got to eliminate those two things to have a chance to win. Argos after the turnover, first down at the 39. Here's Kerrigan. And that's Robert Clark inside the 25. 14 yards for Clark, a simple pattern. He's had a pretty good night so far. But that's what the run and shoot system is. It's a simple system. It's based on what the defense do. You do the opposite thing. Hey, there's Bobby Humphreys giving all kinds of room. So you cut your pattern off short. And the quarterback reads the same thing. You have a nice completion. If the corner comes up and plays it tighter, you go deeper. Hey. They are finally executing this run and shoot the way it's designed. Fifth catch for 69 yards. Kerrigan, Masadi lost the ball, and they rule it no catch. Number 88, Paul Masadi had it for a split second. John Wiley covering. Good timing pattern, about six steps, break to the out, the ball's in the air. Very difficult for number 31, Hesh Kohler, to cover. I think that's a fumble. Good numbers for Mike Kerrigan, 12 of 20. They can't beat that, 206 yards in a quarter, just a better in a quarter of football. Argos lead 10 to 7. Toronto first down, make that second down. Far side. Asadi makes the catch, and we'll see where they spot the ball. Hesh Collar covering number 31. It'll be third down, a yard to go. The Argos have to get across the Sacramento. 15 for a first down. Garrigan himself. No flags anywhere. The Argo drive will continue. Argos are vastly improved along the offensive line from week one in Canadian football in 1993. I don't think there's any question about that. Even just getting a little more experience in there with Belanger and Lorenko and Green playing together for a while, but they're very happy with Steve Rodahuskers, who's playing his first game tonight. You know, if he had a look at how far it actually was, I'm not sure Dennis Meyer would have gone for that again. One of his receivers said it was a couple of inches, the other said a yard and a half, but he saw the yard and a half a little too late. Well, it was somewhere in between inches and a yard and a half, but they get the first down. Out the goal, minor 14. Kerrigan to the end zone, wide open. 
Robert Clark and Kerrigan over Tostum that time. Wide receivers have been the prime targets for Kerrigan so far. Asadi has the touchdown at 55 yards. Clark has 69 yards on five receptions. This time, it's Clark to the near side. Mazzotti, far side of the field. Second and ten. Kerrigan almost picked off. There's a flag down. Mazzotti was the intended receiver. Let's see how they view it. It's against Sacramento. Interference number 37 on the defense. First down. That's Keelan Matthews, the linebacker on the left side. John Wiley got his hands on the ball and was close to getting an interception, at least he thought. Yeah, I think they meant number 31, Hesh Kohler. He yeah. made contact before the ball got there. There is a 37 as well. But Kerrigan on first and goal. Clark couldn't bring it down. The veteran Bobby Humphrey, number 39, was with 89, Robert Clark. Toronto really has felt like uh, they would be able tonight to go over the top of that defense. They tried it uh, numerous times. Uh, that time Bobby Humphrey's with excellent position, and when the receiver turns his head to look for the football, that's the cue for Bobby Humphrey to turn his head and put the hand up. And his timing was flawless, and knocked it away. And, well, you can't do it any better than that. Second and goal to go, the Argos. At the Sacramento 7, Kerrigan. Touchdown! Penalty marker down. But Kip Lewis got across the goal line. Barely across. Watch again. Kip Lewis touchdown. touchdown. They take advantage of the Dave Van Bellingham interception. Mike Kerrigan drives it down the field. A face pass penalty will be called. The touchdown will stand. Kip Lewis gets his third of the season. The Toronto Argonauts are having a very impressive first half. One more for the Argo total as Lance Chavik puts the Argos in front by 10 at 17 to 7. Kip Lewis across the line. Yes, folks, he is from Skydome, CFL Live. Here's Kip Lewis right up here, the slot back. And, of course, he's going to be working on Walter Bailey, number 23. Now, Bailey, you can't take the man head up down on the goal line. Like, he's head up right in here. You've got to pick a side down the goal line and commit to that. When you're head up, you allow that receiver all kinds of room to make a quick little move and get to the outside. Lewis does a nice job. They get the touchdown. They take advantage of the turnover. All of the above, and it's all pretty good for Toronto. Time of 317. Kerrigan finishes it off with a seven-yard pass to Kip Lewis on second and goal to go from the seven. Something for Argo fans to cheer about at Skydo. Yeah, there hasn't been a great deal this year, but tonight certainly uh, very well executed first half. Kickoff from the 50. That face masking penalty was assessed on the kickoff. Titus Dixon gets out across the 20 yard line, making a 25 yard return. And the gold miners have fallen behind by 10 points. David Archer battling back from his worst loss of the year against the Eskimos last week, down 26 to 3. The gold miners never really recovered against Edmonton. And Archer is trying to overcome a tough night against the Eskimos and a tough start here. And one of the reasons why his numbers are only 6 to 10 is the Toronto's really kept the ball away from Sacramento nicely here in the first half. 
Fisher. He got it away. Archer barely got it away to Mike Oliphant. No, John, I think David Archer's thinking this. Hey, you know, there's a lot of time left, obviously, in this game. But 17-7, here's a team that's maybe tasting victory for the first time in the Toronto Argonauts. I think David Archer's saying, you know, I think there's a sense of urgency right now for me to try and make a long drive and slowly return some momentum that we had early on that Mike Oliphant touchdown run. Gold Miners felt they played pretty well against Calgary. Down there and almost won that game. Yeah, rightfully so. I mean, that was an unbelievable game. Harold Hallman is the injured Argo. Number 70. An eight-year CFL veteran, the last six with the Argos. 43 career sacks with Toronto. 34 prior to that when he was a Calgary Stampeder. Back and uh, there's Harold Hommel right in the middle of your screen. Ron Shipley, 51's on his tail, but I'll tell you what, a whole lot of meat to that pile up there. Really tough to tell what happened to Hall. They can't afford to lose him, though. I mean, they have a front four that's pass rush is struggling. They really need him. One more look. to see exactly what happened to Harold Hallman on there. He was one of the Argo veterans this week who was challenging some of the newcomers on this football team to uh, get a little bit more serious about football. Yeah, and I think what he meant by that is, hey, get in, look at the film, study your opponent, know every single thing you can about him to make yourself as well prepared as you can be for the game. Second and five, Sacramento. Archer with time from the shotgun, now it evaporates, and he's dragged down from behind. That was Mike Campbell, number 99. And that's sack number two of the season for Mike Campbell. Boy, do they ever need a big performance from Mike Campbell. I felt like he's been an underachiever this year. He had a great year two years ago and has not been able to get back to that form. So this sack tonight is a very encouraging sign for the defensive coaches of the Argonauts. Mike Campbell's second sack of the year. And boy, do they need him hitting on all cylinders for their defense to be effective. He's a leader for that club. You know, we talked at the beginning, the difference might be that front four. And so far, I think they've uh, really risen to the occasion tonight and put lots of pressure on Archer. On third down, Paul McJulian, not deep. This is the pinball at midfield. Nifty little maneuver in the pinball. Mike Clemens grabs about seven yards on the return as he gets into Sacramento territory. So far, the Argos have looked sharp. And they have a 10-point lead from Skydome, CFL Live. Ran a quick play to Derek McAdoo. Good for a 15-yard gain to set up at the 32. Here's a look back. Mike Kerrigan, Derek McAdoo over the middle, and Mike Kerrigan's forte, good at the sprint and throwback. And uh, that's something that really Tracy Ham has not been comfortable doing. Another Argo first down, this time at the 32. Kerrigan stands in. McAdoo makes the catch. Took a good hit, turned around. Grabbed the first down. It was Curtis Moore smacking McAdoo after the catch. He turned it into a 17-yard gain. You're going to see right in the middle of your screen. Look at 94 zeroing in. Hey, he had a chance to unload on McAdoo, but McAdoo just bounced off, absorbed the contact, and was able to squirt around for another six, seven yards. And boy, you don't think those things are uplifting for an entire team when they see a newcomer like McAdoo take on the hit, bounce off, and pick up some extra yardage for second effort. Hey, Leif Dennis Meyer was correct. The Argos are getting better. This is a pretty good football display we're watching so far tonight. First down, Argos. Sacramento 15. Charges on Kerrigan. Masadi is open. Yes, sir. Paul Masadi. In front of Kolar. Number two on the night for Masadi. A 15-yarder. That's his third of the year. And this play was designed specifically for Mazzotti. All the receivers were right. 
Kerrigan goes back to the left side. Kolar gambles. He comes underneath. He doesn't think Kerrigan can throw the out that far. And boy, was he fooled as Mazzotti gets his second touchdown of the night. And the Argonauts, well, they've got everything going their way here in the first half. Lance Jonick, Kerrigan to hold. Jonick is three for three plus a field goal. Mike Kerrigan has been awfully sharp for the Argos. Asadi has two touchdowns so far. And the Argos have been impressive. Mike Kerrigan, he's got all his receivers up here to the wide side, so he's going to go back to Paul Bazzotti, who's over here. Let's run it, because you can't really see it until this play develops. Let it go and let it go. Okay, stop it right about there. A little more, a little more. Okay. Hey, here's Hesh Kohler here. Look, he goes underneath the out of Mazzotti. He says, no way that quarterback can throw the out that far. He gambles, he loses. Mazzotti's got the touchdown in. Boy, Toronto Argonauts and, more importantly, Mike Kerrigan have had just a whale of a first half. Hot hand for Kerrigan so far. Another impressive drive. Three plays, 48 yards, and a time of 2.01, and topped off with a pass to Paul Mazzotti. You know, everybody wondered, when is the run and shoot going to get in track? When is everybody going to be in sync together? Well, tonight they are in sync. When Sacramento's laying off, they're throwing short. When Sacramento's up tight, they're going over the top of it. Everything is working perfectly for Dennis Meyer, and more importantly, I think, for Miles Davis. We haven't talked about him tonight. The people have been skeptical about the reemergence of the run and shoot. Would it work? Well, tonight it's working. So far, the Argos have struggled trying to put points on the board. But Kerrigan has got them rolling tonight. 17 of 27, 269. Three touchdowns and the interception. The TD to IC ratio is pretty good. And, and Mouse has to be a little happier that things are finally clicking for his run and shoot. Yeah, I mean, he's taken a lot of heat uh, about his offense. Uh, was it the right kind of offense for the Argonauts? And Tracy Ham, well, Ham hasn't been able to adjust to it so far, but uh, there's a guy out there wearing number 12 tonight that has seemed to adjust himself perfectly to it. Here is the Argo kickoff. Here is Titus Dixon on the return, number eight. He's a speedster. He gets to the outside. Got around Darren Hughes. And sets up the gold miners with Pretty good field position up near the 40-yard line, perhaps the best position that Archer has had for the last three attempts anyway, the three time, last three times he's had his hands on the football. And they can't afford to let this game get out of hand. I mean, they trail by 17. I don't think that's what they pictured coming into tonight's ball game against a team that hasn't won a game. So uh, imperative for David Archer to work his way and fight his way back into this football game with five minutes remaining. Titus Dixon to the near side. Good fake to Oliphant. Archer pumps once and now takes off. He'll be close to the first down all by himself. Stop near the 50-yard line. Archer doesn't run a lot. He's like Mike Kerrigan. No comparison between these two so far tonight, however. Kerrigan has tossed for 200 yards more than Archer. And three touchdowns more. Just a tad shy of the first down. Third down. Second down, rather. Second down, less than a yard to go. So, a free play. Yeah, and if I'm David Archer, I go to the play action right now. And maybe not the home run, but maybe a little play action to Oliphant and hit the Pringle up in the flat and try and pick up 20 yards that way. But, I mean, I would use this as a free play. He's not listening to your call. David Archer has the first down. Jay Stevenson deciding to play it a little more cautiously than Leif Patterson. <laughs> Half time, four minutes, 33 seconds away. We'll take you once around the Canadian Football League, update everything in sports so far this day. And Leif will have the story of the game.
First and ten, Sacramento. Still at the Gold Miners 51 yard line. Archer back in a hurry, near side. That'll be a first down. Ron Harris, number 81, steps up after a 19 yard gain. have had some difficulties along their offensive line. Gary Frank has been there most of the way, but they've got three key injuries up front. Gary Frank, the national deadlift weight champion. Big time weightlifter, good pick all upon by Archer one more time. Near side again. Dixon can't make the catch. That is Dixon, number eight. Drew tight coverage from Reggie Pleasant, and Archer was off the mark a little. Reggie Pleasant's had a good first half. They haven't had a sniff over on his side of the field. Now Gary Frank, you know, let's go back to him again. A 310 pounds now. Could he be anything else but an offensive tackle when you look at him? I don't think I so. I mean, he is the prototype. I mean, it would take a day to get around him. 334 to half time. This is second and 10. Sacramento. Archer stands in. Target that'll be a first down for the gold miners. Ron Harris, it's two catches in a row for him. Hitting Chorus Urban that time. 18 yards this time. A good protection for Archer there. The blitz is coming, but they do a terrific job to form a nice pocket for him and he picks out Rod Harris downfield. So we we mentioned that this was a pretty crucial time in the ball game for Sacramento, and they had to answer. The Toronto 24 points with maybe some of their own, and David Archer certainly put a nice drive together in the closing minutes of the first half. From the Argonaut 22, first and 10 goal miners. Another solid fake to Oliphant. Archer really had nowhere to run as penalty markers fly all over the field, and might have been a little holding detected down there. Was that number 64, Claude Jones, hanging on? Well, we'll check that out when we return to Skydome. Three-minute warning. The Argos in control with a 24-7 lead on the CFL Live. In reality, there is life after work. And there is a place for clothes at work, just as well off the job as they do on it. Reality is you only got so much money to go around. So you want fair prices on clothes that can do a job for you all the time. That's where you come in, for what looks good and what works even better. Because there's more to life than collecting a paycheck. There's Mark's Work Warehouse and clothes that work. Welcome back to Sky Dome with Dan Peroni, who, surprise, surprise, thinks that the play of the Argo offensive line has been the key to this lead in the uh, first half. Well, the offensive line is just dominating right now. Sacramento's only bringing four. They're coming straight at them, and they're such a big offensive line, the biggest offensive line I've seen play for Toronto for a long time, and they're just they're controlling the, the ball play right now. I think a lot of people would be surprised that Paul Mazzotti's having the kind of success that he's having, but you're not. No, Paul Mazzotti's a great athlete. He's got great hands. He's getting open, and he, the ball's getting to him. And anywhere he can touch it, he's been catching. He's doing a great game. All right, we'll see you in a bit in the Froney file. That's terrific. Those offensive linemen, they always want to talk about the guys up front, don't they? Well, in this case tonight, I don't blame Dan Peroni because Blade Schmidt and the rest of his teammates in that old line have done a whale of a job protecting Mike Kerrigan. Far cry from the Great Cup team in 1991, this Toronto Argonaut team. Blade Schmidt was around, but he wasn't a starter back then. Not many left on offense from the Grey Cup champions in Toronto before Calgary won it last year. So it's not all that long ago. When I was looking down the list, I could only find Paul Masani as, as a starter on the offensive team from that 91 Grey Cup year. Yeah, I would agree with that. Blaine Schmidt, of course, was on that team, but if I'm uh, correct, he was a, a backup at that point. And of course, Mike Clemens was, was, was on the team, but a starter, and he is not listed, at least, as a starter in the backfield for this one tonight. First down and 20. Archer 
Over for Dixon. No catch at the 10-yard line. That is Dixon couldn't bring it in. Archer underthrew him just a little bit. Well, they've been trying to go against Reggie Pleasant tonight, but see how Reggie Pleasant takes the inside away. It's almost like he's anticipating that post to Dixon, and boy, he is there and waiting if the ball is on target. So Archer looks at second and 20. Tough situation right here, the Argo defense. Knows he has to throw it from the 32. Archer stands in, and there's nowhere to go. Brian Warren gets his second sack of the season. And everyone was covered, so I take it the Argo secondary was doing a pretty good job back there. Pleasant Wilson, Van Bellingham, Hughes, and Irvin. Yeah, they were, and of course, just the front four coming in. Anytime you could get pressure and get a sack with only rushing four guys, you've done a good job against that offensive line. Brian Warren finally fights through the block, gets the sack, but, you know, on David Archer's defense, uh, not a great many uh, plays in the playbook on second and 20 to complete. Jim Crouch is wide. The Argos concede a single point. Jim Crouch good on 8 of 14 coming into the game. He's on 8 of 15 now. 24 to 8, the Argos continue to impress at home. Well, you're going to get a great look here at the snap and a little off center, and you see it just knocks the tee away, so the holders say, hey, what do I do now? And, uh, of course, Jim Crouch is expecting it to be about a foot to the left. And Carl Parker, the holder, just, uh, I mean, he was in a rather huge dilemma there. What do I do, put it on the ground where he's normally going to hit it or try and get it over the tee? And nothing worked for him. the field goal and uh, only get a single point out of it. Jim Crouch had a tough welcome to Canadian football in Ottawa. He went 0 for 3 on his opening night. Garrigan continues with a hot hand. Robert Clark stepping out near midfield. Clark covered by Kip Tejeda. Tejeda out of McNeese States. In 10 starts with the Montreal Machine in the World League. Kind of interesting, we've got a Kip Tejeda. And he's covering most of the night, Kip Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Kip and Kip. Kip on Kip. First and ten to go, Argos. This is Warren Hudson. We haven't seen a lot of Derek McAdoo running the football. The Argos had suggested they might try and establish the run in this game a little early, but Kerrigan hasn't needed the run very much so far. Uh, he has done it with a tremendously fluid ball control passing game tonight. Uh, Mix in the run every once in a while, and that's what the run and shoot predominantly is uh, throwing offense and just keep them off balance occasionally with a good run like Warren Hudson did there, almost a first down. Second in the yard, Hudson gets the call again. Brent White, number 71, made the stop. He plays alongside number 91, Rob White. No relation. Of course, a minute and 22 to go now with the Toronto Argonauts at the 44 of Sacramento. They've got a great opportunity to grind it out, take all the time off the clock, and, of course, add to their 24-8 lead. Kerrigan on first and 10, far side of the field. Masati, another first down. Super first half for Paul Masati. Finally surrounded by gold miners near the 27. And, of course, it's a no-win situation for the Sacramento corners. If they lay off, Toronto is just going underneath it. When they come up tight, Toronto is stretching it out. And Paul Mazzotti has enjoyed a really good first half because he is reading the defenses properly, making the right adjustments to his patterns. And, of course, Kerrigan is seeing it and hitting them. Another first down. Argos at the Sacramento 28. Kerrigan intercepted this time. 
Down at the 15, picked off by Tejeda. Give Tejeda soldering down the sideline. But uh, this play has been whistled dead. He'll take it all the way anyway. Third interception of the season by Kerrigan. Two have come tonight. Well, Mike Kerrigan with great protection once again to pick out his receiver and his ball slightly underthrown. Kip Tejeda breaking on the football nicely. Steps in front of Lewis with the interception and that is his third interception of the season. He had two in the opening game in Ottawa. Now has gone four games with that one. Finally gets another one tonight. His third of the season. Argos have the lead at 24 to 8. 35 seconds to go. Archer has a long way to go. Mike Oliphant. A decent run, but time is running out on Sacramento in the opening half. Pressure on Archer. Yes, they've had some. Yes, they have. Three sacks so far in the first half. And for a team that only had seven after five games, I would say that that is very, very good production from that group right there. Archer on first down has Pringle and Pringle out across the 42 yard line. 21 seconds till halftime. Archer will have to hurry. He's got a good opportunity for at least three more plays. Call a timeout and maybe get your kicker Jim Crouch in position to hit a field goal at the end of the half. Under the cover for Freeman Basinger. And he ran right into Darren Hughes. Little game. Timeout called by the Gold Miners. 12 seconds on the clock. Argos look for their first win of 1993. Mike Kerrigan has been a big part of the story for Toronto in the opening half. David Archer has struggled a little bit. Halftime includes a quick trip around the league, the sports updates, and the story. The game, which will include Mike Kerrigan. Absolutely. And Paul Masati. And I think a defense uh, for the Argonauts that for all intents and purposes has played very well here in the first half, only giving up eight points. Defense hasn't been on the field for a long time for the Argos tonight. That might be a key. Yeah, that's a great point. In the past, uh, that has been their Achilles heel. They get tired. Tonight, uh, they look refreshed out there. 12 seconds to go. He goes for the home run toss. Olafon can't bring it in. Mike Olafon slipped in behind the Argo cover there, but couldn't quite hang on. Well, you look back throughout the course of the game at plays here and there that may be momentum changers, and had Mike Olafon been able to hang on to that perfectly thrown pass by Archer, hey, they would have been an easy position for Crouch to kick a field goal, and that's a ball that should have been caught. Watch K. Stevenson. You don't think he thinks it should have been caught? Why, coaches? Get a little gray around the temples after a couple of years in the business. That's why they wear hats. <laughs> I like that. Seven seconds remaining till halftime. One last chance for Archer. He stands in, looks for the home run toss. Two receivers upfield. It was a jump ball. Mike Olafonts almost came up with a tip ball there. However, it was not to be for the Sacramento Gold Miners. Who have a long way to come back on the Argos. They answered the first touchdown, but they haven't been able to answer the next two. Half time in a moment. This is the CFL Live. The first five games, the Argos turn in their most impressive 30 minutes of the season 312 net yards. They did turn the ball over twice, but one of those was on a bounce. They owned the football. And you can expect to see more of Hesh Kolar getting picked on in the second half. He stepped in. Early in this football game to play the left corner for Sacramento. The Argos have been tracking him throughout the first half to see what he does on every play. And they think they can take advantage of him even more in the second half. Let's go upstairs to John and Luke. All right, Gordon, we talked about Kerrigan's numbers in that first half. And you talked about Mike Kerrigan in the opening of this telecast, Leaf, saying this was an important ball game for him to reestablish himself as a number one quarterback in Canadian football. He came to the Argos as a backup last year and has had to work himself into this number one position. 
based on the performance tonight, he has really established himself as a leader, hasn't he? I really think he has. You know, this probably could be, could be the turning point in uh, a rejuvenated career for Mike Kerrigan. So many great years in Hamilton. And now really perceived uh, not only by his team, but maybe other teams throughout the league uh, as a second teamer, as a, as a backup quarterback. But for him to get rid of that stigma, that perception, he had to have a huge game tonight and possibly be the starter down the road. And... Boy, he has uh, fulfilled all of the wishes of his head coach, Dennis Meyer, as he has come up with an unbelievable effort for 30 minutes. But let's make no mistake, it's only 30 minutes. Sacramento Gold Miners are down 24 to 8. Uh, there's a lot of time left in this football game for a team that has struggled and not played 60 minutes. This will be the task at hand for Toronto. Can yeah. they hold this lead? There's no question. The Argos have not played 60 minutes of football in one game this season. And... Sacramento, with only one win so far over the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, has really managed that feat only once so far. So we'll see what Kay Stevenson and the Gold Miners can do as the second half is set to get underway at Skydome. The Argos have the lead at 24 to 8. Titus Dixon takes it at his 10 for Sacramento. Slipping through the first wave of tacklers, he's still on his feet and caught from behind. Steve Rada Huskers got a nice tackle to sweep the feet out from underneath. Titus Dixon, number eight, or he might have had a few more yards. A 32 yard return, decent field position for David Archer. The numbers on the quarterbacks, Kerrigan has more than twice as many yards. And three times as many touchdowns as David Archer so far. Goal Miners at the 42. A draw to Mike Pringle, met by number 72, Arnie Williams. What can Sacramento do at this stage of things, Leaf, to get this offense on track? Well, John, I think uh, the receivers have to just do a better job catching the football. They had some balls that were catchable in the first half that they simply dropped. And, of course, David Archer can't do it by himself. They have to help him out a little better here in the third and fourth quarters. Here's the charge on Archer again. He has to throw on the run. Good catch. Rod Harris. And it will be plays like that that uh, would maybe get Sacramento back into this game. Rod Harris with a nice job, sees his quarterback in trouble, and watch the adjustment. He will make zone coverage. There goes Hughes out to the flat now. He's trying to just get to an open area. Hey, my quarterback's in trouble. i got to get outside, get into that open spot, and Archer sees him. That's a good job and a good catch, but they're going to have to make a lot of those plays because it's going to be an uphill to get back into this one. A 19-yard gain setting Sacramento up first and 10 at the Argo. 46. Mike Oliphant, number 33. Number one rusher in Canadian football coming into this game. Tough running against the Argo front three that time. They plugged it up with Hallman, Harding, and Campbell. Three for 67 yards, and one was a long way. 53 for the touchdown. Gain of two, second and eight. Archer, shotgun, pressure again. Harris was the intended receiver. Jonathan Wilson stuck his nose in there. Toronto Argonauts trying to put a little extra pressure on David Archer. Here's Campbell coming up, and watch Ken Benson. He comes in and almost gets the sack on David Archer. One of the reasons why he has to let it go earlier. Campbell on the blitz, or on the stunt, rather, and watch the hit by Jonathan Wilson there. What a hit that is. They call him the smoke. And maybe that's why he smoked him. <laughs> Paul McJulian. In his second game, the pinball, Mike Clemens gets the Argos up near the 30. All Toronto so far, third quarter just nicely underway. The Argos have a 24 to 8 lead on the CFL Live.
Play touchdown to win at Safeway. For every touchdown scored during CFL telecasts on TSN, you could win one of these prizes. A Corning Spectrum cookware set, a wall back massager and cordless shaver, a Thermos four-piece gift pack, or Hoover's Power Max cleaning system. Or win a trip for two to Puerto Vallarta, courtesy of Canadian Holidays, a world of vacations. To enter, look for these participating products, Kraft salad dressings, or Betty Crocker Pop Secret Microwave Popcorn. Touchdown to win. Another reason we're today's better way. Instead of slamming your foot down on the brake pedal, squeeze and release the brake using just the force necessary. It will increase the life of your car's braking system and save you money down the road. Trust your brakes to Midas. Why settle for average protection against razor irritation when Edge gives you the best? Edge Gel. Ultimate closeness. Ultimate comfort. That's the Edge. Now, McCain brings you French fries, the next generation. McCain Golden Crisp, the natural taste of fresh Canada number no. one potatoes, locked in with a delicate crispy coating. So when you crunch through that crispy coating, you'll taste the best fries that ever came out of an oven. McCain Golden Crisp, new cross tracks and spirals. McCain Golden Crisp, the next generation. the QEW tomorrow for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders and the Hamilton Tiger Cats Iverwind Stadium. Join us. Kickoff 7.30 Eastern. Sean Gregory versus Don Matthews. They're both here tonight watching this game taking a little time out to watch a game without a lot of pressure attached to it. Mazzotti to the near side of the field. Oh. Kerrigan looks for him. Short of the first down. Stopped there by Kolar. But Mazzotti has another eight and a half yards. Yeah, and his seventh catch already tonight as we are early in the third quarter, and it's been simple. The defensive backs stay back. The Toronto receivers have been instructed to run the eight-yard hitch, and he has done that all night long. You see seven catches, only 95 yards, not a huge average, but very effective when you consider the ball control aspect of their passing game. Second and two. Hudson got the call and he gets the 40 yard line. It'll be close. Should be an Argo first down, Gordon. Dennis Meyer gave his team an emotional speech at halftime. No major technical adjustments, but he talked to them about what a joy it was to watch them playing at their best. And in fact, throughout this game, Meyer has talked to almost every single player on the sideline, giving them encouragement. He told me before the game that it's probably as important that he coaches his team mentally right now as strategically, because he thinks they know what they need to do, but they need the confidence to carry it out right now. Following the game tonight, a preview of the Rough Riders and Hamilton. Argoano Bruce McNall joins us, and he'll be a little happier, I'm sure. And leave for the story of this football evening, which centers around Mike Kerrigan so far. He hasn't had a whole bunch of pressure from Sacramento. Asadi, another first down Argos inside the 50. And even 20 yards for Paul Masadi, who's having quite a night and gets up with a a little bit of a lip. You know, you asked me what does Sacramento have to do to get back into this game. Well, they can't continue to do this, play soft coverage. I think the only times that they've given the Toronto receivers trouble tonight is when they have come up and challenged them. That time, number 31, Ash Kohler, gave Mazzotti all kinds of room. He came inside, did the pivot back to the outside. Easy pass for Kerrigan to complete. I think they have to come up and jam those receivers. Hey, take their chances. You may give up the long one. Who knows? But I'd rather dictate rather than be dictated to me. And so far, this Sacramento defense has played it pretty soft, and Kerrigan's had everything his own way. Paul Mazzotti jumped up after making that catch and then went right down again. They're checking the knee. Eight for 115 and two TDs. He has been the offensive story for the Argos. Since Kerrigan got 
to play a little more frequently. He has made Mazzotti a pretty good receiver, and he talks about Mazzotti. Well, he's a good receiver, you know, and he's, uh, even last year, he was our leading receiver on the team, you know, and, uh, you know, we struggled offensively last year, and, uh, you know, yet Paul, you know, rose above everybody else as far as receiving goes, and he's a great receiver, you know, he's got great speed, great hands, he goes for the ball, and, uh, you know, he has all the things you look for in a receiver, and, uh, you know, especially the, the ability to go for the ball, you know, when it's between him and the defensive back, more times than not, he's going to get it. Kerrigan really hit it on the head. They have confidence in him that he will go after the football. And boy, does that ever mean a lot to a quarterback because more often than not, if you're not going to catch it, at least you stop the other team from having an uh, attempted an interception. So that is a, when you describe a receiver as someone who will go after the ball, you're paying him a real compliment. Let's go back and see if we can, that's exactly what happened. Was uh, the. Looked like the left leg got pinned underneath, but it was really the right leg that they, Kevin Duguay was looking at. Serious blow to the Argos, and Paul Mazzotti is very upset because I think this is going to keep him out of uh, action for quite some time. It's just a guess, but I was reading his lips down there as he talked to the trainer, asking him how long he might be out. Kip Lewis made that catch. Kip Tejeda. As happy as Dennis Meyer was a moment ago, devastating news on the Argo sideline. Paul Mazzotti has torn his medial collateral ligament, and Meyer's demeanor on the sideline just went to black. That's a devastating blow for the Argos. So that means that Wally Zatilli, number 80, will come in and try and replace Paul Mazzotti's production tonight. Second and five, and Kerrigan. Has Clark, good catch. Robert Clark, far side. And he is inside the 25. Humphrey and Tejeda covering on Clark, and he still made the catch. Yeah, you saw Tejeda shake his head. He said, how in the world did he ever make that catch? Look, we've got double coverage. We're in great position, but Clark comes up with the football with a spectacular over-the-shoulder catch. And Mike Kerrigan, hey, when you're hot, you're hot. Tejeda's laughing. He said, hey, no way he should have caught that. But look what happened. Kerrigan has had all kinds of time to throw the football. Well, when you talk about storylines, it's the Kerrigan numbers, the catches of Mazzotti, but the hidden story is the protection that offensive line has afforded him. From the 23, it's Warren Hudson. Let's go back and talk about that offensive line. And where you see 66 Steve Rota Huskers was just in your picture a moment ago. They have not given up a quarterback sack tonight. The Sacramento front four and linebackers have not come close to Mike Kerrigan all night long. 25 sacks allowed by the Argos coming into this game. Yeah, five a game, and tonight uh, they have done a complete turnaround. Kerrigan on target once more. Willis. Number 84. Silent receiver for a while, but he's into the game again. Well, we talked about the offensive line of Toronto. Watch Keelan Matthews hiding in behind Vance Hammond. He's going to come on the blitz, but who's there? Blaine Schmidt, number 54. He picks him up, and once again, Mike Kerrigan with unobstructed view downfield. He finds Larry Willis, and Toronto is taken off right where they left off in the first half, putting a nice time-consuming drive together and very productive. Kerrigan is first and goal to go at the Sacramento six. End zone toss. Nobody there, but a marker goes down. Someone was hanging on to someone in the end zone. That's the indication. Referee Budstein talks it over. Val McComan. Deliberate forward pass interference. Number 39 on the defense. Bobby Humphrey called for the illegal contact, and here he's working on Robert Clark. I don't think there's any question about this one. He was beaten to the corner, and, you know, really, that's not a bad play. I know they get a first goal on the one, but he was beaten anyway. Would have been a sure touchdown, as that's where Mike Kerrigan was looking. Boy, did Clark put a move on him. Argos first, and goal to go at the one. has the touchdown. 
The indication from the official on the line was a little slow in coming, but McAdoo definitely in. First touchdown is an Argo for Derek McAdoo. So touchdowns that had been few and far between for the Argonauts in their five-game losing streak in 93 now are more abundant tonight. Their fourth major of the evening, a one-yard run by Derek McAdoo, and he caps off a terrific drive by Mike Kerrigan. And we can't say enough about the offensive line. They're giving Kerrigan time to throw, opening up just enough of a hole for McAdoo to get into the end zone as well. Lance Chomick adds one more to the Argo total. So far, the Argos have made few mistakes. They lead 31 to 8 on the Sacramento Gold Miners. And there's lots more football ahead from Skydome. You're watching CFL Live. Just say no. Say no to costly roof replacement and disposal costs. The secret weapon of roofing professionals for over 20 years, Master's Choice, can now save you hundreds to thousands of dollars on your shingle, tile, metal, and flat roofs. With just a roller, anyone can easily apply our industrial-grade, waterproof, seamless rubber roofing directly over your old, tired roof. Seven colors, water cleanup, and a 10-year warranty. The leak stops here with Master's Choice. Well, before this game, many of the Argos thought the toughest opponent they'd face tonight would be themselves and their own attitudes after losing their first five games. Mike Kerrigan talked about how the Argos would approach snapping this streak. There's a, uh, you know, the will to win basically is the only thing I can say. You know, you get 0-5 and, and, you know, you get a lot of people on you, you know, saying what's going on, you know, your family, your friends, you know, the dogs barking and biting you, <laughs> wondering what's going on. But, uh, you know, we want to win so bad and, it, you know, it gets a little bit frustrating, but at the same time, it... Uh, you know, you know, get you get you going really, and uh, so I think the intensity is there. You know, it's just a matter of going out and doing it, and, and we have that opportunity tonight to go out there and get our first win, and hopefully carry on things from there. First touchdown rushing for Derek McAdoo. A one-yard plunge. Dennis Meyer should be smiling. Not yet. Argos lead at 31 to 8. 7.37 to go in the third quarter. Titus Dixon tries to get Sacramento back in this ballgame. Good return. Dixon needs one block. Well, he needed maybe more than that, but he's up near midfield. And David Archer finally has decent field position on a 42-yard return. Titus Dixon. Argos hit the end zone one more time to make it 31 to 8. Nine plays, 80 yards, and here Kerrigan used up a decent amount of time on the clock, 440. That's been one of the great keys for the Argonauts tonight. Uh, the problem in the past, the defense has been on the field too much. They just get tired out in the second half. But tonight, the ball control of the Toronto offense has kept the defense uh, far more refreshed than they usually are. On first down, Sacramento. Ron Harris steps out after making the catch. No, He's short of the first down. Sorry, John. Defensively for the Argonauts, they're, you know, you're ahead 31-8. to eight, And you don't want to take any chances here. Of course, Urban giving Rod Harris all kinds of room on that out, and that's okay. Look, let them have the easy ones. What you want to prevent is the long, easy, quick touchdown, the one that maybe turns some momentum back in, into Sacramento's favor, gets them back into the game. That's the one you want to prevent, but there also becomes a fine line when you play too soft, too. We'll see how Toronto handles this big lead. After the measurement, it will be first down, Sacramento. Now at the Argo, 46. Mike Campbell with a sack so far tonight. Two on the season. Trying to get a little more heat on David Archer. There is heat. Archer forced to throw in a hurry. Looked for Mike Pringle, a former Eskimo. And the combination did not work that time. Much more spirited effort from the front four of the Argonauts tonight. Mike Campbell in particular, he takes the outside position and then cuts back underneath to get some pressure on Archer. He was able to get the ball away, but 
Working on number 64, Claude Jones. Campbell does a nice effort, a second effort, to try and get some extra pressure. Three sacks and eight pressures on David Archer so far by the Argos front four. Standing in again, just got it away. This should be good for a first down. Freeman Basinger stepping out after an 11 yard gain. Don Moan chased him down. Little criticism on the Argonauts defensive grouping in the newspapers in Toronto this week. Harold Hallman, as we talked about earlier, was challenging some of the younger players to get a little more involved. The defense has played well for the Argos. On first down, Archer on target again. Titus Dixon, number eight, made the stop. Looks like Don Moan over here. David Archer's doing the right thing. He knows Toronto's sitting back protecting the lead, so we'll just march it down, throw those underneath pass patterns if Toronto's going to sit in that deep zone. And He's doing that. Uh, Titus Dixon there. On the other hand, Toronto, hey, that's good solid defense, too. Don't let anybody get in behind you and force Sacramento to put maybe eight to ten plays together to score against you. 5.39 to go, third quarter. Mike Oliphant gets inside the Argo 25. Toronto leading 31 to 8. Veteran Don Moan in on the tackle. He arrived in Toronto from British Columbia with Rob Smith in 1982. He's been here ever since. And that uh, totals 12 years. Never missed a game, Donnie Moan. Pretty impressive. Shotgun, second and seven. End zone toss. Couldn't hang on. Titus Dixon in behind the coverage. Couldn't quite grasp the football. Well, oh, Archer, so close. Yeah, David Archer's back picked up the blitz. His offensive line did a good job. Hey, great sight lines downfield. And oh, so close for Titus Dixon. Hey, right in your living room. Should he have had it? Mm, would have been a great one. But as he hits the ground, the ball comes loose. Well, you be the judge. Should he have had it? Oh, I think maybe. Well, you know, when you trail 31-8, to eight, you need to have some huge plays to get you back into it. And I think, you know, as they look back, David Archer might say, hey, I wish my guy had come up with the big effort for me. Storyline so far has been the other quarterback, Mike Kerrigan. 24 of 35, 368 yards so far. Three touchdowns, two interceptions, and really didn't hurt the Argos all that much. The Argo defense has kept pretty good pressure on David Archer all the way along. We talked about three quarterback sacks and lots of pressure since the evening began. Yeah, when you consider their defense is not predicated on doing a lot of blitzing, I think it's more impressive the fact that they've had three sacks against a big offensive line of Sacramento and only done it with four against five most of the night. Don Moan will be back. Jim Crouch tries again. 0 for 1 tonight. That one will count. Jim Crouch gets the gold miners a little closer, but there's still 20 points in arrears to the Argos on the CFL Live. Check the map. Cancel that order, guy. All right. Yeah. Let's see. You want a Coke? No, I'm making a Pepsi. Well, what's the diff? I can't said that. The difference is one tastes better. This one. You chose Pepsi. The majority of soft drink users tested prefer the taste of Pepsi over Coke Classic. You want sausage or pepperoni? What's the dip? Live from Skydome. CFL Live on TSN tonight. The Argos playing their best game of the season by far have the lead by 20 points. Following tonight's game, the turning point for Armorall. 
There is a fountain of youth, and we own the patents. Harbor All, protect it. When it's this hot, don't take chances. Only Armor All Protectant guarantees your new car's dash from cracking. There is a fountain of youth, and we guarantee it. Armor All. Argos look to be headed for their first victory of a new campaign. And they'll host the Edmonton Eskimos in their next home game Wednesday, August 18th. Ticket information available at Ticketmaster in Toronto. Entertaining football team tonight. The run and shoot is finally cooking, and the Argos have been very impressive. Well, they really have for a lot of reasons. Mike Kerrigan has uh, come up to expectations, and his receivers have done a nice job adjusting their patterns according to what the Sacramento defensive backs are, are doing to them. Toronto football at the 35, first down. Kerrigan, good protection for a moment. It broke down. First sack of the night. Mark Ledbetter with his second sack of the season. First time that they've been able to sack uh, Mike Kerrigan tonight. Mark Ledbetter working on Kari Lee Rinko at the top of your screen. You'll see him come around with a good move. And as Kerrigan steps up into the pocket, it's the speed of Ledbetter to come and get him from behind. Pretty good one-on-one -on -one battle won there by Mark Ledbetter. Kerrigan was stepping up into the pocket, so it's only a loss of one yard. Wally Zatilny, number 80, a former Ticat, a 19-yard game. And when Kerrigan first got to run this Toronto offense against BC, he went to Wally Zatilny a couple of times late in the game. Yeah, I think Zatilny actually had about six catches for over 100 yards that night. And although he's getting a chance to play tonight because of the injury to Paul Mazzotti, I really think that Wally Zatilny could be a valuable receiver in this scheme of things on second down situations coming in and being the fifth receiver. They haven't chosen to do that so far, but well, I think he could be useful doing that. Argo first down right at midfield. This is Warren Hudson. More than halfway to a first down. He ran into Keelan Matthews. But the gain is close to eight. We'll see where they spot the ball in a moment. Meantime, here's Gord. Thanks very much, John. The moon on the Argo sideline is very downbeat right now because of Paul Mazzotti. He's got the torn medial collateral ligament. They're going to scope him on Monday. They think it may also be his ACL. If that's the case, it's his season. And this very popular Argo is a very unhappy man right now, and understandably so. Well, it's just a shame. Paul Mazzotti was having a great season, and uh, you hate to see that. And, uh, boy, our... Condolences go to him for sure. Kip Lewis made the catch. Short pattern, close to the first down. This is what Toronto's done so effectively tonight. They've used that short passing game, and there's no way Tejeda can stay with him when it's that quick and easy ball to complete for Kerrigan. You eat up time on the clock, you keep your offense moving, and boy, Toronto gets full marks for how they've worked the short passing game when Sacramento was giving it to them. Just enough for the first down. The Argo drive continues. A 20-point lead for the Argos. Kerrigan good on 26 of 37. Closing in on 400 yards. He's at 390 right now. And he's on a 7 for 7 now sevens are up for Kerrigan draw play works effectively marker is down McAdoo still standing as he hits the 25 Argos have had problems along the offensive line with injuries and retirements Coming into this season, this is the way the Argos looked when they won the Grey Cup. Schultz, Ferroni, Beckstead, Skip, and Prunster. Now it's Rota Huskers, Belanger, Schmidt, Green, and Ilirenko. A lot of changes to the offensive line in less than two years. Well, really, four out of the five retired, and Chris Schultz is injured. So a total revamping in two years. And uh, people wonder why a team struggles. Well, when you've got so many new people to replace, uh, very difficult sometimes. against the Argos. This is first and 20. And Kerrigan gets most of it back. 
Robert Clark, number 89. He might even have the first down on second effort. Exactly 20 yards. But John, you know a receiver is feeling pretty good about himself when he can make this kind of a play. Watch as he catches. He is stopping and turning instantly on a dime. And, you know, he's not worried about making the catch alone. He's thinking, hey, catch it and get a few more yards. And when you do that, you know he is playing with an extreme amount of confidence. McAdoo, he's sticking his nose a little cheap there, but uh, what the heck, got away with it. First and ten, Argos now at the Sacramento 35. Zatilny made the catch and goes over the Air Canada banner on the sidelines. 14 for Zatilny. He was in flight over that banner down there. Here's Hesh Kohler again. You know, Mazzotti beat him on the out for the touchdown, but watch. As Zatilny breaks to the out, Kohler continues to try and come underneath for the interception. He obviously doesn't feel that Kara can control the out to the wide side of the field. Well, hey, he's learning a tough lesson tonight because he just doesn't know how strong Mike Kerrigan's arm is. Nine in a row for Kerrigan now. What a roll he's on. He won't make it ten in a row, but there's interference called on Robert Clark. Bobby Humphreys had a tough night. Well, you'll see the right arm of Bobby Humphreys stuck right in the ribs of Robert Clark here. And watch, uh, he knows the ball's in the air and he gives him the push and there's no way that Clark can get upfield and, you know, call it what you want, illegal contact, interference, whatever. It's uh, an automatic first down for the Argonauts. So Kerrigan's streak will stay intact. Still yeah. In a row. You can't end it on a penalty. He'll get the first down. Bobby Humphrey has more experience than any other player see on the Sacramento team. When he was with the Jets, he had some very successful seasons. One month, American Football Conference Player of the Month. Kerrigan looks to the corner. The streak ends on that one. Robert Clark couldn't quite bring that one home. Second and ten. The key in bump and run coverage is to get over the top. See Clark looking back. Hey, look back. Now break to the outside. And when he looked back, that fooled Bobby Humphrey because that's his cue usually to look back because he thinks the ball is in the air. But pretty good head fake by Robert Clark to break to the out and totally fool Humphrey. Two seconds remaining. Third quarter. Argos second and ten. Sacramento 11. Kerrigan looks for six more. I think that was deflected in behind the goalpost there. I'm not sure. Maybe Curtis Moore got a bit on it. That's quarter number three. The Argos. Drive will end here, at least as far as a touchdown is concerned. We'll be back for the fourth quarter in a moment. Hi, folks. Welcome to our Control Center. I'm Michael Landsberg. Hope you're enjoying the football game. We'll get back right to it in a moment. Right now, the Boston Red Sox, they knew as they were taking on the Minnesota Twins that the Blue Jays had been beaten by the New York Yankees, so uh, they had a chance to move within one. Good defense in this one. Uh, Lenny Webster grounds to Scott Cooper. He throws him out, but Mack does come in to score. More D here. Tony Pena hits one to Jeff Reboule. Reboule will move to left center field, and that ball is uh, gone. That's actually Bob Zupsik with a home run. Then Boston takes the lead. The score was tied at one. Yvonne Calderon at the plate. Mike Greenwell standing on third. Calderon lifts one to Shane Mack, and the run will tag and score in Boston. Beat Minnesota by a score of two to one. Now, the Blue Jays were beaten by the New York Yankees, so things are the way they were two days ago. It is the Yanks and the Red Sox one game behind Toronto. All the details on Sports Test coming up at 11 Eastern here on TSN. Today's touchdown to win winners may receive one of these prizes from Corning. A 10-piece set of Revere Spectrum cookware in sapphire blue brings both functionality and fashion to your kitchen. The unique design allows you to steam or strain vegetables and pasta with ease. Or the Hoover Power Max, a self-propelled cleaning system that makes vacuuming almost effortless. It leaves your carpets beautifully brushed and groomed. 
And with the power to handle those stubborn pickups, ballots available at all participating Safeway stores. Welcome back to Skydome. A couple of your pals down from Unionville there for the, yeah. for the game tonight? Yeah, TSN, the Skin Network at Skydome. So obviously a curling reference. <laughs> Getting ready to early start on the Skins game. Yeah, I wonder if Moosey's watching tonight in Winnipeg. Talked to Ray Turnbull, our curling analyst, the other day, and he was talking about the Winnipeg-Calgary game. Three more for the Argos here. Apparently, that was one of the great CFL games in the last little while. Stampeders came back to win it on the Winnipeg Blue Bombers by five points, 40 to 35. It was supposedly one of the great games that you can see in Canadian football. We've seen some great ones this year. Argos played Calgary very close last week. 39-36, Stampeders there. Well, Doug Flutie's amazing. It seems like you know, week after week, he's faced with a challenge. He, he did it to Sacramento, too. He took it down against them late stages of the game. So three times this year, he's been successful. And, boy, it's, uh, he's taking up right where he left off uh, a year ago and trying to be the first player in CFL history to be three times in a row the league MVP. How about Mike Kerrigan tonight? 457 yards. 424 passing. Time of possession, 26.07, and that's why this is a 34 to 11 ball game for the Toronto Argonauts. You know, you can take all the yardage and yeah, that is great. Obviously, they've been productive, but the time of possession really tonight tells the story because for Mike Kerrigan, he has kept his defense off the field. The defense that Dennis Meyer admitted yesterday has been tired in the fourth quarter. Boy, they shouldn't be tired tonight. Happy to see that for Kerrigan, who gets a chance and uh, has proved himself worthy of it. Played a superb ball game tonight. Elon Matthews on a short return. Enter David Archer to try and ignite something. You know, when you look at the Toronto setup right now, obviously Tracy Ham was uh, pegged in to be the starting quarterback and lead them this year, but it's not a bad system when you think about it. Mike Kerrigan, the starter, he's been very productive, but if you ever had to make a switch, you really go the other way when you bring in a Tracy Ham if he can come in and run a little bit. So, you know, it's it's not a bad quarterback in tandem when you look at it. For a while, I thought it was going to go the other way with Kerrigan coming in as the reliever. Yeah, I did too. Everybody did. Here's Archer, first down. And he'll get another first down. Titus Dixon, number eight, he's a speedster. 431 yards and a touchdown coming into this game. Talk about his speed, he averages over 20 yards of reception and uh, that is uh, very, very good for your wide receiver position. First down, Sacramento. Archer, time to throw this time. Now it disappears in a hurry. Rod Harris, number 81. He'll be close to a first down. Arnie Williams, one of the Argo tacklers. And once again, it's the same situation for Toronto. Make Sacramento earn anything that they're going to get here in the fourth quarter. You've got a 23-point lead to keep everybody in front of you if you can. Archer standing in. Far side, another first down. Titus Dixon, oh, one more catch. Talked about the Stampeders and how sharp they've looked this season. The Bombers had a great game this night, too, but they couldn't beat Flutie in the dying seconds. Look at the toss here, and he finds Allen Pitts just inside the goal line for a five-point Stampeder win. More pressure from Campbell that time, tipping the ball, tossed by David Archer. No question, the best game that Mike Campbell has played so far this season, and I talked about him earlier in the game. He has to get back to his form of two years ago when they won the Great Cup. He was the sack leader on the team that year, and last year tailed off a little bit, but for them to be successful, when I mean, you talk about the Rodney Hardings and the Harold Hallmans, the veterans of this club, I think it's Mike Campbell that really has to be the leader on that front four. Second and 10. Sacramento at the 28. Archer stands in. Penalty marker down. No completion. Far side of the field as Archer had two receivers in the area. 
Carl Parker, I believe, was his number one priority. Penalty looks to be going against the Argos. Illegal contact on an eligible receiver, number nine on the defense, first down. Archer was sacked seven times last week against the Eskimos. The Argos have been all around him with pressure and sacks. Not a sack there, but Brian Warren put the heat on. Penalty called, so Archer has a first down. Now at the Argo 18. Archer stands in. Freeman Basinger, the intended receiver. Dave Van Bellingham was with him. I think the Argo secondary has played pretty well tonight. Chorus Irvin has been mentioned a time or two, but uh, realistically, it seems the receivers have been well covered. Well, they, they played better. Uh, I think Sacramento's missed about three good opportunities to hit the touchdown pass, but David Archer just simply missed that one. They Toronto's played a simple scheme on defense. They got into trouble against Calgary two games ago, getting their guys stuck in a lot of terrible man-to-man -man situations. Tonight, they've zoned it up a little more and been much more patient. Second and ten. One man in the backfield to block for Archer. Can he get away? No, he's grabbed from behind, and now he escapes to the right, but not for long. Tried to get around the right side. And Arnie Williams, number 72, finally got to David Archer. He talked about pressure on Archer. The Argos have had that since the evening began. Well, there have been a lot of factors why Toronto is leading this game tonight, but one of them certainly has to be the pressure that the front four has been able to put on Archer. They've had three sacks on the night, and they've had a hand in his face, and he has been terrorized. Actually, the fourth sack now just by Arnie Williams. And no question that is a reason why the Toronto Argonauts enjoy a 23-point lead here in the fourth quarter. Defensive pressure. Four sacks. Enter Jim Crouch. Sacramento settles for three. So it's 34 to 14. The Gold Miners in tough against the Argos, who are playing superb offensive football on the CFL Live tonight. At Midas, before doing any work on your car, we give you a guaranteed estimate of what it'll cost. We show you what needs to be done and make sure we get your approval before doing it. Guaranteed estimates. Another reason to trust your car to Midas. Glossin. Sounds good. Tastes even better. Football is fun ball. The CFL's football is fun ball program continues at Lamaru Park in Scarborough on Monday, August the 9th, and on the 16th at McMahon Stadium in Calgary. If you're under 18, you're welcome to attend. Further details from the Canadian Football League or your closest CFL team. It hasn't been a fun night. Football hasn't been fun ball for David Archer <laughs> so far this evening. Oh, he's taking a lot of shots. There you see the left elbow take up of Archer and uh, he has uh, had a very rude indoctrination into the CFL one win and a lot of nights he has been faced with a great deal of pressure his offensive line now has given up 29 sacks in six games and but when you're averaging five a game I mean that's very difficult for a quarterback to get into any kind of a rhythm talk about rhythm Mike Kerrigan he's been in sync all night long with his receivers and one of the reasons his offensive line has afforded him time to throw the Argos have been in control of this game since the very outset with 10 points in the opening quarter, two touchdowns in the second, and 10 more points in the second half for a 34-14 lead. First and 10 for Kerrigan. Penalty marker is down in the Argo backfield. McAdoo, the ball carrier. the call against the Argos. So it'll be first down and 20. 
Eleven twenty two to go. Fourth quarter. Kerrigan and the Argos back at the 25 now. Robert Clark to the near side. Four receivers to the far side of the field. Kerrigan swings it to Derek McAdoo. Right after a two yard gain by Curtis Moore, number 94, the Sacramento middle linebacker. It'll be second and a bunch. Well, for Sacramento here, they trail by 20, and they are just trying to get some respectability out of this fourth quarter. Hey, maybe, who knows, they got a chance to still get in this one. Only three touchdowns behind in the CFL. It could be an eternity with 10 minutes to go, but they need respectability on defense. Toronto's had everything their own way. Second and 16 for Kerrigan now. And the goal miners get through for their second sack of the night. Mark Ledbetter, and that's two for Ledbetter himself. With an interested observer on the uh, sidelines here at Skydome, Kent Austin out of uniform, but playing tomorrow night against the Hamilton Tiger Cats down the road. What do you think of what you've seen tonight? Uh, Toronto's playing really well. They're playing real well offensively. They're controlling the ball, and uh, Kerrigan seems to be real sharp tonight. You might have got him a little mad after what happened uh, down at your place last week. Well, we played well, but of course they had that short turnaround like we did when we played Sacramento, and uh, they've had uh, a, a good time to prepare this game, and, and they're doing a better job. We're looking forward to your game tomorrow night in Hamilton because that's a great pressure defense, and that really seems to bring out the best in you. Well, I hope so. I mean, we'll see. They, they, they play well. They've won on defense this year. They haven't really played that well offensively yet, but they've got a great defense, and we got to work it out for us. What's the mood of your football team like right now after the big win last week? It's pretty good. It's always been good. I mean, we've got a confident team. We, we felt like we had a pretty rough go of it, you know, four games in 16 days. There's no excuses, but, uh, you know, a week to prepare is a lot, a lot, a lot of difference. Thanks very much, Kenzie. Yeah. Freeman Basinger, the touchdown of 59 yards while Kent Austin talked to Gordon Miller. Lance Chomick. Punting for the Argos. That was only the third punt of the night for the Argos. And watch Basinger go here. Yeah, watch the block. Whoa, right there in the screen. 73, Ken Benson just gets floored. And they set up the wall down the sidelines. And Basinger escorted by Titus Dixon, who throws the final blocks, block on Lance Chomick. Wow, Sacramento's back in this one in a hurry. Freeman Basinger, a 59-yard touchdown. Jim Crouch, the point after. And all of a sudden, Sacramento with 9.23 to go. Gets right back into this thing. This is the CFL Live. In reality, there is life after work. And there is a place for clothes at work, just as well off the job as they do on it. Reality is you only got so much money to go around, so you want fair prices on clothes that can do a job for you all the time. That's where you come in, for what looks good and what works even better. Because there's more to life than collecting a paycheck. There's Mark's Work Warehouse and clothes that work. Scaled it, jumped it, skied it, surfed it. Rode it, dove it, flew it, crashed it. Never slammed it, never guzzled it. You've never done nothing to you do diet do. Did it, dug it, savored it, relished it. Hey man, let's do this again. Sacramento with the punt return by Freeman Basinger for the touchdown. And usually when you set up that picket wall, you only need one critical block, and it's coming up right on the left of your screen. Okay, a little bit farther. Okay, freeze it. Let it go just a tiny bit further. Hey, there it is on Ken Benson. Oh, did he get rearranged? And now it's free sailing around the corner. Titus Dixon out front, but 
You know, so many times on a kickoff return and a punt return, it's that one key block at the point of attack, and then the receiver, the kick returner is on his way. And the Sacramento Gold Miners, in a hurry, are back in this one, thanks to Freeman Basinger. Yeah, 9.23 to go. There's lots of time. They call it a 62-yard return for the touchdown. And it's a 13-point ball game. So a quick touchdown here for the Gold Miners, and we're in for a big, big finish. Wally Zatilde on the return for the Argos. Slowed down and stopped at the 20. See, there's the difference on a kickoff yeah, return. Zatilde slowed Zatilde. down as he came into that wedge, and of course, Freeman Basinger with the acceleration to get around his block. But, hey, now for Kerrigan. Here's a team that hasn't won yet, and they're finding themselves in foreign territory with a 13-point lead. How do they play? Well, Mike Kerrigan's had a great night. You see his numbers. He has to keep doing the same things he's done. Throw the short pass, try and eat up that clock, and keep the ball moving. Two or three first downs, the worst thing you do is kick it away and reestablish that field position. But this is a difficult uh, point of the game for Mike Kerrigan and his offense. 9.07 to go. We're in the final quarter at Skydome. The Argos trying to hang on for their first win of the season. Do have a 13-point lead, but there's lots of time remaining. Kip Lewis, the intended receiver, couldn't quite squeeze it. They see Lewis, and he is open, but he cannot hang on to the football. The Sacramento Gold Miners have countered now with six defensive backs in there trying to shut down the Toronto Argonaut receiving core. And their mission right now is to get the ball back as quickly as they can for David Archer and let him have an opportunity with plenty of time left in the clock to really get back into this game. They trail by 13. Second and 10, the Argos at the 20. Markers are down. Some early movement from the Sacramento side. Lewis makes the catch, and he's out of bounds. Forced out by Kip Tejeda. Tejeda. Kip and Kip. Kip Lewis, Kip Tejeda. Good throw by Mike Outside. Kerrigan. He knew he had a free play. Sacramento had jumped offside, so he said, heck, we're going to get this out, keep this one going, and that's what they need to do. A couple more first downs, and the worst thing they do is reestablish some field position to make Sacramento begin their next drive from deep in their own territory, and that's what you have to think as a quarterback. If I can get across midfield, hey, then it's gravy. Then we start thinking about trying to score. 8.19 to go, fourth quarter. It's the Argos by 13. This is Warren Hudson. Drop play to Hudson. He's near the 40. Sacramento, not a solid pass rushing team so far this season with only six sacks and six interceptions. Yeah, that's last in the Canadian Football League in both departments. So they have not had the turnover production, certainly on defense. Turnovers were a problem the other way. They've had 18-7 last week against the Eskimos. Second and five Argos. Here's Kerrigan. Stepping up. Larry Willis, number 84. Clutch catch for Willis. That's a great catch over the middle, and Toronto Argonaut receiving core is doing it against seven defensive backs now for Sacramento. They carry eight on the roster, so they are really putting a lot of extra guys in for coverage, but Larry Willis able to beat it. Now, back-to-back -back first downs by Mike Kerrigan, and he has accomplished what he wanted to do. Get a couple of first downs. They're at midfield. Hey, they've done a good job. Anything now is gravy. Kerrigan has marched the Argos out to midfield. It's first and 10 at the 55. Time remaining, under seven minutes. The receiver goes down. Kip Lewis. Second and ten. Argos have the lead at 34 to 21. Mike 
Mike Kerrigan has had a hot hand with the Argo offense, facing second and ten now. Near side, Willis, the intended receiver, and he has the catch. Picked off, I should say, by Marshall Roberts, number five. So the seven defensive back scheme pays off for the Sacramento Gold Miners. They have everybody shut down. Marshall Roberts was in perfect position to make that interception, and after a punt return for a touchdown, now they get the key turnover. They get the ball back quickly. And he just simply out-wrestles Larry Willis for that football. Give Kerrigan credit. I mean, he moved that thing about 45 yards, and so Sacramento still has a ways to go to get back into this one. We'll see if David Archer can engineer a comeback. This is CFL Live from Skydome. When it's this hot, don't take chances. Only Armor All Protectant guarantees your new car's dash from cracking. There is a fountain of youth, and we guarantee it. Armor All. Gillette introduces the best shaving gel ever. New Gillette Gel. Advanced lubricants. Easier razor glide. An incredibly smooth shave. Now the best gel is Gillette Gel. Toronto scheme to bring three receivers. Here comes Larry Willis across. Now he's going to run the out and up, but Marshall Roberts comes in and does a nice job to stay with him. Let it go, and he just stays on the inside hip of Larry Willis. Super coverage here. Watch, now it's bump and run. As soon as he sees Willis, his eyes look back. He looks back, and he's in perfect inside position to make that interception to get the ball back. And, hey, they're only down by 13, and for Dennis Meyer, whoa, he's going to get the roll aids out. They're looking for the first win. They're in comfortable position, but they still have a long way to go. Meyer General Manager Mike McCarthy feeling a little heat in Argoville the last little while. 0 5 doesn't make for uh, good feelings with the football fans or the media, but Dennis was saying yesterday he thought his football team was playing a lot better, and he proved it so far tonight. Now he has to hang on and not let this victory slip away. So for David Archer, a chance. Really, he has struggled tonight. He's had a lot of pressure on him, but, you know, he has a chance to be a hero. There are his numbers for the evening. Not great, but he could still come out of this one looking pretty good. Archer on first down. Pressure in the shotgun. Short of the first down is Titus Dixon. Reggie Pleasant makes a nice tackle on a pretty slippery receiver at Titus Dixon. Here Pleasant reading the quarterback's eyes. Now he breaks on the football, and well, that is a good tackle to gather yourself and make the play. Basinger has another first down. He's out across the 45-yard line. Freeman Basinger at the touchdown. Return on the kick by Lance Chomick. Tomorrow. Ticats and the Rough Riders from Ivor Wynn. Rod Harris. Harris is short of the first down. Well, the strategy simple for the Argonauts defense. They're laying off and they're just saying, hey, David Archer, if you can put eight, ten plays together to get back into this game, good for you. We don't think you can. We'll see whose philosophy is better. Yeah, Titus Dixon has another big first down for Sacramento. 4.45 to go. The Argos lead it by 13 and 34 to 21. Get up the roll aids. Yeah. I'll give David Archer credit. He is picking apart a very soft zone defense right now. He knows what to expect when he's seeing things well. Archer stands in, got some pressure. Dixon made the catch. That's. A couple in a row for Titus Dixon. He's been a big part of this drive. His fourth start for Sacramento. 21 receptions, 431 yards coming into this one tonight. Slowly you see the Toronto front four just wandering back to the line of scrimmage to try and slow this game down just a touch. Sacramento first and 10 at the 24. Archer stands in. Nice defensive play. Reggie Pleasant. Pleasant. Standing in and just getting a hand on the football. Tight coverage here. Yeah, he's got good inside position to begin with, and he's seen this hook about three times in a row, so 
He steps in and makes the good knockdown there. And coach, or coaches will tell you, hey, interceptions are great, but knockdowns are just as good. Second and ten. Sacramento at the Argo 24. Three thirty-seven to play. Big play for the Gold Miners here, and the Argos defense comes up with sack number five. And John, that's a coverage sack because Corin Irvin was working on Rod Harris. That's where David Archer was looking all the way. Harris went to the post corner. Irvin was with him all the way. Look, you see Archer looking to the right all the way. He wants to throw now, but there's no way he's covered. And that allows Ken Benson, 73, to come in and get the sack. And you talk about big defensive plays. None bigger than that one by Chorus Irvin. Benson gets his second sack of the year, forcing Sacramento to third and 14. They'll have to gamble down by 13 with 3.10 to go. Archer stands in, looks for the home run toss, and it's well covered by Chorus Urban. And a hand up in front. Carl Parker was the target. Archer was almost on the money. In fact, he likely was, but a good defensive play by Urban. Well, the ball hung up just enough that Chorus Urban was able to use his quick closing speed and he gets the hand up. They try to fake the quick screen to draw everybody up, but Chorus Urban is not fooled in. Oh, that's pretty close. That's a solid play by Urban. Well, it's a good throw by Archer. You just have to say, hey, he just made a heck of a defensive play to knock that one away. Three-minute warning at Skydome. Another injured Argo. We'll tell you about that when we return. Skydome, CFL Live. Gillette introduces the best shaving gel ever. New Gillette Gel, advanced lubricants, easier razor glide, an incredibly smooth shave. Now the best gel is Gillette Gel. Dan Ram with the explosive Molson Motorsport IndyCar World Series from the New Hampshire International Speedway. The Molson Motorsport New England 200. It all begins Sunday, August 8th. Right here on Real TV TSN. Next home game for the Argos is against the Eskimos. Should be a good one. Lancaster has the Eskimos firing on all cylinders. A three and one record. Chorus Urban, the injured Argo. Tough night on the Argos for injuries. Dennis Meyer trying to hold on for his first win of the year. Argos are 0 5. They've lost Doris Urban and Paul Masati. It's like serious injuries to both players. Now, Mike Kerrigan back at the controls. 2.50 to get off the clock and hang on to this win. It's picked up, intercepted. By Charles Franks. Franks looks to the end zone. He's down to the four yard line. Hang on, we could get set for a big finish here. Charles Franks, first interception of the year. Last two passes have been interceptions. So oh, the tip drill. Larry Willis cannot hang on to the football. Charles Franks has it. Wow, the Toronto Argonauts who had a very comfortable lead have seen it shrink in a hurry. The punt return for the touchdown, now the interception down to the goal line, and you see the turnover factor tonight. Argos had the lead, 24-8 at halftime. A little excitement on the Sacramento pitch. Opportunity knocks, 34-21. The Argos by 13. But Sacramento knocking on the door, first down. Goal to go at the four. Oliphants looks to get to the outside. He'll score. Maybe. A touchdown between these two teams with 2.32 to go. Second of the game. 
for Mike Oliphant. The first one was a little more dramatic. Well, maybe not more dramatic. A longer run. This a little more dramatic as he gets Sacramento within a touchdown. Well, he does a nice job allowing his blocking to form. It's the old, like, Washington Redskin counter tray. And you see the reaction of Dennis Meyer. And slowly, what was a very comfortable lead in a game well in hand is slipping away. As the Argonauts will still have the lead after this extra point. But. But 2.32 remains on the clock. And that's the part of the story we're looking at right now. Time count violation. And I think the goal miners counted 11 players and not 12. John Wiley into the game now. So Jim Crouch saw that there was a mismatch on this convert. Got to be tough putting together a football team in a matter of a couple of months, Lee, because realistically, you've got to get every player on the team, all 37 guys, knowing the rules of Canadian football. Yeah, plus you're playing mostly with all rookies who don't have a great deal of pro experience, so you combine those two, and uh, it has been difficult for Sacramento, but what a tremendous running play by Mike Oliphant, and what they simply do, it's an influence play. He's going to take one step here and come back this way, but what happens? He's got James Harper. He's got Gary Frank. They're coming around the corner like this. Everybody blocks back, but watch this now. Mike Oliphant hesitates to let 62 Gary Franks get ahead of him and peel back and cut back on Arnie Williams, and that's all it takes for Mike Oliphant to get into the end zone with his second touchdown on the ground. And hang on to your hats. Another typical CFL finish here, 2.32 to go. Toronto Argonauts clinging to a six-point lead. 34-28 is the score right now. Mike Kerrigan has really outdueled David Archer. Start to this point in the game, but it is a six-point ball game now, and Archer may get another opportunity to put seven points on the scoreboard. In fact, pretty good bet that he's going to get another opportunity. Well, some people might say, hey, a short kick at Toronto's expecting that with their hands team in there, but I kick it deep lots of time on the clock, and they do just that. The pinball, Mike Clemens, what a time for him to have his run and return of the season. It doesn't happen. Looks like he stumbled at the 25. John and Leaf, there's a very key factor now on the Toronto bench. Hunter Hank Elisic has a strained leg muscle and will not return to this game. That means that Lance Chomick, the place kicker, will have to punt if that's required. And that could be the deciding factor in this football game. He punted the last time. Basinger took it 53 yards for the touchdown. Mike Kerrigan, first and 10 at the 25, 226 on the clock. It is the Argos by six. Derek McAdoo. Good run by McAdoo on the draw. Tejeda, number nine. That's Kip Tejeda. Made the stop on McAdoo, and what a big run that was for the Argos. And a pretty gutsy call. Toronto has recognized that Sacramento is going with seven defensive backs, just inviting Toronto to run at that kind of a defense. They do so with the draw. Derek McAdoo just outruns a few people and pick up a much needed first down. This is character check time for a team that has struggled and they hang on to a lead. 17 yards for McAdoo. That was only his third carry. His total on the night is 18. First down Argos. McAdoo again, only a couple this time. He ran into Brent White and Rob White, the right side of that defensive front for Sacramento. On the clock, two minutes. On the scoreboard, the Argos 34, Sacramento 26. We'll preview the Saskatchewan Hamilton game following this one tonight. Talk to Argo owner Bruce McNall. And Leaf and Dan will analyze this one for you. 147 to play in it. Kerrigan looking. Oh, Clark. What a catch. Robert Clark. I think his biggest catch in the CFL. Yeah, these are the kind of plays that heroes are made of. And when your team is facing a critical point in the game for them, you have to come up or you would like to come up with the big play. 
Well, Robert Clark does that with this clutch catch, and for Mike Kerrigan, did he put that on the money or what? Has Bobby had a tough night? Bobby Humphrey on the corner? Yeah, I think he's had a tough night. Every time he's been in bump and run, he's had great difficulty locating the football in the air. A minute 22 to go. The Argos, that far away from their first win of the season for the six-point lead. Hudson, most of the way to a first down. Now a minute 14 to go. Kerrigan has worked the clock pretty well on this possession. And Paul Mazzotti was the leading receiver until he was knocked out of the game with the knee injury. Robert Clark seems to have picked up his game a notch since that. Nine catches, 150 yards, and none bigger than that last one to keep this drive going. And more importantly, two up precious seconds on that clock. Seven-yard gain. This is second and three. McAdoo will not get the first down for the Argos. But they are definitely in Lance Chomick range with a six-point lead. No decision to make here. You bring in the kicker and go for that three and uh, have a great opportunity. Yeah, that'll that'll make it away. nine. Yep. Wide will make it seven. And as it stands right now, a six-point lead. Timeout called by Sacramento. Make Lance think about this one a moment or two. Rather comfortable for the Argos and Dennis Meyer at halftime with a 24 to 8 lead. Brendan Basinger got the Gold Miners right back in this one with an electrifying punt return touchdown. Yeah, and then the interception on the tip ball by Charles Franks took it down to the five. All of one into the touchdown. And two plays, really. Sacramento found themselves back into a football game. Kerrigan will hold for Chomick. He's had a perfect night so far, but he hasn't been called on to hit from great distance. This will be spotted at the 32. And no doubt about it. 49 seconds on the clock. The Argos have a nine point lead. See one happy coach who's been feeling the heat just a little bit. Whoa. Yes, baby. You can exhale now, Dennis. Yeah. Not quite <laughs> over, but that should be enough. He's right. His team is getting better. Well, it's the best personnel that he's been able to put on the field tonight in their sixth game and certainly has showed in their performance. Argos have had a rugged schedule over the past eight days. Three games, including two away in Calgary, where it's tough to win at any time, and Saskatchewan, where it's tough to win as well. Mike Pringle on the receiving end of that. It's been a while. It's been a while since they've won at home here at Sky Dome in Toronto. Yeah, it has. October. Ten games. Yeah. <laughs> Carl Parker gets down inside the 50. Actually inside the 45. There's a penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage with 30 seconds on the clock. Offside against the defense, the Argos. So with a nine point difference, Archer looks at first and 10 at the Argo 45. 30 seconds on the clock. He has to score twice for the win. Pringle again. 25 seconds to go. Yeah, and it's nice to complete those passes, but really, he's got to take more chances. He's got to go downfield with it. He's got to get it in the end zone quickly. And those little seven yarders over the middle just won't do it. No, the Argos will give up a lot of those. Keith Costello, or Darren Hughes, I should say, number 27, tip that ball. So now 17 seconds to go. Dennis Meyer that far away from his first win of 1993, and that will take 
some of the heat off, particularly when you look at how well the Argos played on offense. The run and shoot finally fired. Well, it's taken a while, but you uh, have to be impressed with how it has functioned this evening. Should say it finally fired for a full game because there were sparks of it against Calgary. There's no question about it when the Argos lost by three last week. 15 seconds on the clock. Opportunity for Sacramento to score. Down to the two-yard line. Make it the three. Carl Parker on the receiving end of that David Archer toss. So for Kay Stevenson, a ray of hope. Do we have time? Eight seconds remaining. Well, I think it'll be very difficult, but the opportunity is there. Five seconds left on the clock. Not quite over. Thirty-seven twenty-eight. The Argos have the lead. Sacramento at the two-yard line. Time off the clock. Touchdown in front of Reggie Pleasant. Ron Harris. Now one second unofficially on the scoreboard clock. It's a nice effort to, to make it close, but uh, the only way that I could conceivably think that Sacramento could pull this off, I mean, the clock will not start on the extra point, but if they could ever catch the kickoff on the fly, that would be the last play of the game. The goal miners are screaming. There should be four seconds left on the clock. They thought an extra three ran off there on the play before the touchdown. Well, the clock is unofficial at this point, I'm sure. All right. It's a two-point ball game now, and unofficially, one second on the clock. But even if there were three or four, that same play would have to work for Sacramento, right? Yeah, absolutely. Recover the kickoff and take it all the way for the touchdown. Yeah, it won't matter. Uh, or kick it in. No, kick it into the end zone doesn't help either. Unless you recover it. That's true. Somehow, I don't think that'll happen. They have to try and just chip one up in the air and pick out a designated guy that the player that they want to catch it on the fly and have maybe three four five guys block the Toronto Argonaut players out of the way before he catches it and hopefully he can do it I mean hey there's a lot of ifs and buts and all that kind of stuff yeah. uh, the bottom line is I think Toronto's got this one in their home and cool it'll be a two-point win for the Argos one would guess with a second left on the clock but Dennis Meyer can't afford to take any chances the Argos have to get a hold of this football, get it out of bounds, or at least contain Sacramento here. So there's a little special teams duty still to be done for the Argos. Well, Toronto counters with their hands team, players that are used to touching the football, and they have 10 men up there that will try and take this ball down it and pick up their first win of the season. Now you see up the top of your screen, uh, Sacramento has all the speedster, Titus Dixon and Basinger and those fellas, they're going to try and catch it on the fly and see what they can do. A major collision down there. The Argos come up with the ball. Time is officially off the clock. They fire the cannons. Boom, boom. Dennis Meyer has his first win in the Gatorade shower. And the Argos deserving of a victory that turned out to be a little closer than I think statistics will indicate in this one. But Mike Kerrigan has the Knights that all quarterbacks dream of and I think uh, solidly establishes himself as the number one quarterback in Hogtown, at least for a little while. He was rather brilliant, particularly the first half. 305 yards passing in the first, and the numbers overall look pretty good, too, Leaf. Yes, they do, and I think you have to be so happy for Mike Carrigan, who really accepted the challenge of being the number one quarterback tonight, getting the start for the second week in a row, and digging down deep and recapturing some of that great talent that he had in his successful years with the Ticats. How about these numbers for the night? 32-49, 486 yards three touchdowns four interceptions yes 
there were some blemishes on that great night, but the bottom line is he won. And when you talk about a quarterback, you talk merely in terms of wins and losses. What can he provide for us tonight? Mike Kerrigan provided some leadership, some character, and restored some confidence to a pretty shattered Toronto team. And yeah, David Archer moved the Gold Miners a little bit too late in this football game. He needed a few more points earlier and came up a little bit short, but Dennis Meyer will take that and uh, smile happily with Gordon Miller on the sidelines. Yeah, Dennis, uh, you can breathe now. Oh, I tell you what, it was unbelievable. I thought, you know, gee, many Christmas, what else can possibly go wrong for us? But our guys hung in and, and played hard for 60 minutes, and, you know, we came out victorious. I was intrigued on the sidelines how you weren't so much making technical adjustments with your players, but just giving them some encouragement and telling them how well they were playing. And that seemed to be as important to this team at this point as anything else. Well, I think, you know, like we were really discouraged there for a while, and I, I felt like, you know, we got to get our guys up and, and, and make sure they understand that, hey, we're doing a good job. We just got to keep it up and play hard, and, and, we'll, and we'll win the football game. When you saw the interception in the final moments of the game that put Sacramento in scoring position, I looked over and you just went white. Well, no question about it. You know, when they, re when they returned the punt for a touchdown, actually when Hank Alisic uh, hurt his groin, you know, I thought, oh, here we go. Another one of those nights, and you know, and then Paul Mazzotti gets hurt. You know, it was another one of those nights for the for the Argonauts, and I thought, oh man, you know, it can't go that wrong, can it? I know you're happy about the win, but the interview with Paul Mazzotti really has to hurt. No question about it. You know, I talked about Paul Mazzotti yesterday, and I said, hey, I don't care what league you're playing in, uh, Paul Mazzotti, whether he's an American, whether he's Canadian, probably one of the best receivers in the league, and I really feel that way. If I mean, and you don't want to speculate, but it looks pretty serious for Mazzotti. Now, what do you do? Well, you know, we have Paul, uh, we have uh, Wally Zatoni. And we also have Ken Whiney in camp, so, uh, you know, one of those guys are going to play. No question. Chorus Irvin made a big league defensive play uh, in, the, in the dying seconds, and it seemed like when you needed Robert Clark makes a big catch for you. Chorus Irvin makes a big play, and I know it's one win, but do you feel like that's what your team needed to, to maybe turn the corner? Well, I know it will certainly keep the monkey off our back for at least six days. <laughs> I got to ask you about Mike Kerrigan. Uh, he, he was on fire for a stretch there in the third quarter, and he really seems comfortable in this offense. No question about it. You know, I thought he really did a great job tonight, and you know, everybody keeps saying, "Scrap the run and shoot, scrap the run and shoot." And I think tonight was a great display of the run and shoot. Dennis, congratulations on a long overdue show. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Greg. The Argos come up winners. We'll be back with more from Skydome in just a minute.